who are on the Zoom call, um, there is a way that you can signify to us that you would like to speak. The first thing that you can do is to raise your hand if you are in Zoom with a, either a computer link or with an application in your phone. You can also unmute yourself, uh, but what I'm going to do first is take the people who have raised their hands. And for those of you who are watching, you can see the little blue hand next to the person's name. So I'm just going to take them from top to bottom. When I um, call your name, you're going to unmute yourself. And what you're going to do is you're going to give your first name, you're going to spell your last name, and you're going to give your address. Okay, here we go. And I will put up the three minute timer. So the first person is Brian. Brian, can you please unmute yourself and spell your last name for? Yes. Oh. Go right ahead. Oh, okay, hi, uh, good evening. <clears throat> My name is Brian Higginbotham. Uh, last name is spelled H-I-G-G-I-N-B-O-T-H-A-M. My address is 850 uh, Neufeld Street, Green Bay 54304. Oh, I hear a beep. Yes, yeah, go right ahead. Okay, <clears throat> so, you know, I, I do appreciate uh, Mary Gingrich's concern. Um, you know, I, I do have a, a, a concern for the welfare of our citizens um, in our city and, and state, nation. Um, but I, I continue to uh, be convinced, quite convinced that, you know, that the true emergency that we're really dealing with uh, at this point is, is fear. Um, we have uh, really got to um, understand that, you know, we have to live. We have to be able to move forward. Um, I, I, you know, there's that, that phrase or, or cliche, you know, the cause, the, the cure can be worse than the, than the cause that's how it goes but um you know I, mandating masks is, is not i'm 100 percent against it um i don't want to sink the ship uh, in order to save a few you know just try to save the sailors um i don't know what we're going to have left if we keep having um ongoing uh, overreach of, of, of authority or overreach of, of constitutional powers um you know, the mayor mentioned um, some of the data here, um, second most cases per capita. You know, I was writing these down. Uh, <clears throat> he mentioned the 46th, we had the, our 46th death. I'm guessing that's roughly since February, maybe March. Um, not to minimize that, but um, I do want to, you know, I am wondering what does this death mean? You know, there's so much conflicting data whether it's March or masks, whether it's um, COVID cases, what does that really mean, death by a COVID case? So uh, just looking at that, I mean, that's one point that kind of stood out to me. Um, is this a, co a death that was directly caused by the Wuhan or Chinese virus? Was it a comorbidity issue? Was it, um, uh, you know, something that that came upon them, you know, as they're dealing with something else, which is uh, comorbidity, basically. Um, yes, you know, we're all in this together. You know, we, we are all in this together, but um, we also need to fight for each other's lives, fight for each other's <clears throat> ability to, to put food on our tables, um, how we're gonna discern what is essential and not essential. Um, I don't know what the criteria really is, and that seems like something that would be uh, vacillating or, you know, from one day to the next. I, I truly believe we're all essential. I believe the church is essential. You know, that this world survived a pandemic of water uh, some 10,000 years ago, roughly. Um, and we've m managed to get up to roughly six to eight billion people, you know. So that's my word. Thank you, Mr. Higginbotham. Uh, the next well, you're very welcome. Yes, thank you. The next person is Mike Shea Jr. Um, Mr. Shea, can you please unmute yourself and say and spell your last name for the committee? Mike Shea, S-H-E-A, 2751 Woodstock Road or Court, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, I really don't want to address whether masks work or not for every 
piece of anecdotal evidence that one doctor gives that says they do work, I can show you a peer review paper that says they don't work. In fact, I sent the entire council a, a uh, letter about that with uh, sites. I do want to talk about what happened yesterday, the press conference and what led us here. Um, I'm listening to what was said in that press conference. And I think that uh, there are certain people that only hear what they want to hear. Uh, for example, yesterday during the press conference, the doctor admitted that uh, we had flattened the curve and we did it without having the mask mandates. Back when the curve was really high, we didn't have mask mandates, but yet we flattened it. And as a business owner in the area, I can tell you that people are still staying home. They're not coming out as much. We're social distancing. Um, business is proving that the government does not have to intervene on our behalf. The private industry in this city, in this state, is saying, we can handle this. We'll take care of it. The government needs to stay out of it. And the reason I'd like the government to stay out of it is a couple reasons. The other thing I heard, in the, one of the other things I heard in the press conference yesterday was the mayor actually saying that it's going to be up to private business to enforce this on their customers. That is absolutely ridiculous. There is no way I want my employees to confront anyone on a topic like this. This is a hotbed topic. Don't put employees and employers in a position to do a job like that. If the police have the time, which I don't think they do, to go out and enforce something like this, then have them do it. Putting it on private business is absolutely ridiculous. The other thing that the doctor admitted yesterday was that masks need training. She said, go look at YouTube. So you're assuming every single person is going to take and get the proper training. Without the proper training wearing a mask, it's useless. People talk about surgeons wearing masks. Yes, they wear disposable masks. They know how to put them on and take them off without spreading germs. The general public does not. The general public will wear the mask wrong, will take it off with their hands, will touch it, will spread more germs that way. If masks worked, then why are countries where people regularly wear masks still seeing the same results we are? I mean, you're saying you need to mandate it, and at the same time, you're saying everybody needs training to work. The mask may or may not work, but I know that the government does not have to tell us what to do. We're proving it day in and day out that we can handle this ourselves. We're social distancing, we're doing the right things, and industry is doing the right things. Thank you, Mr. Shea. Next, we have Lacey Lewis. Ms. Lewis, please unmute yourself. Say and spell your last name for the committee and also give your address. Um, hi, my name is Lacey Lewis. Uh, my name is spelled L-A-C-E-Y, L-E-W-I-S. I live on 9th Street in Green Bay. Um, is that all I need? Yes. Okay. So I heard Mayor Gingrich, or Gingrich uh, speak before about the numbers of positive cases and the number of deaths within the county. Now, while I don't want anybody to personally get sick, I do have a problem with the data. If you're going to say statistics matter, then all statistics have to matter. There are 264,542 people in this county. Of those people, 5,291 of them have pediatric asthma. Of those people, 18,474 people have adult asthma. Of those people, 10,344 have COPD. Of those people, 29,393 people have chronic lung disease. Five, or 155 have lung cancer. That is 63,657 people of the 264,542 people, which is 24% of your population has lung problems directly. Now, that is not including any children under the age of five, which is uh, a total of uh, 16,401 children. That is not including any of the veterans who have PTSD, which is 14,838. 
The number of disabled people under the age of 65 is 18,784. So if you are going to say that statistics matter, of the 1,000 or so that tested positive, out of the 63,000 who have lung problems in our county alone, you have to actually weigh the data. You say there are exemptions for people with disabilities. There are not. Everywhere there are signs politely asking people to wear masks if they care about other people. That is absolutely vilifying anybody who does not wear masks. In a lot of these big cities, people with disabilities who are not wearing masks are getting beaten to a bloody pulp. Should we have all of our store employees chasing people down, beating residents for not wearing masks because they're afraid of the 100 out of 100,000 cases that have tested positive in this county? That's ridiculous. That is absolutely horrific. You are making the population divided based on an issue that we've already seen. We've already seen this during World War II. That's what Nazi Germany did to the Jews. That's what they did to everybody that they put into concentration camps. They dehumanized those people so that other people didn't care about killing them. That's it. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. Uh, we have Galaxy Note 9. Um, please, Galaxy Note 9, please give your first and last name. Spell your last name when you unmute yourself. Uh, and also give your address. Yeah, hi there. My name is Chad. My last name is Crawl. Can you hear me? Yes, you can spell okay. your last name, please, and give your address. K-R-U-L-L, -L, it's Royal Crown Court. In Green Bay? In Green Bay, Wisconsin, yes. Go ahead. Okay, I guess the first thing that has bothered me about this is the right to choose should not when it comes to health issues should not only be to abort an unborn child i think it's ridiculous that we give people the right to choose something that serious and yet when it comes to masks we're going to uh force that mother who's going to abort her child and has that choice to wear a mask when she does it uh it, it just seems ridiculous um, it concerns me that there's no time limit on when this is going to end if it does pass. 99% um, of Brown County is COVID free using your statistics. What number is the magic number where masks won't be needed anymore when COVID is completely gone? Because it's going to become a seasonal flu just like swine flu and the avian flu and I, I just don't see the point of it. it I think this is an overreach. I think it is unconstitutional. Um, I also look at things like our hearing impaired. Um, do you realize that many of them need to read lips to communicate? And now everyone's going to be in a mask when they're anywhere that they need help. Also, if this is so contagious and deadly, um, where are the hazmat disposal areas? Uh, we're going to have people wearing all these masks and throwing them all over the place on the ground. Our city employees can pick them up and store employees can pick them up. They just go into a regular garbage bin at the end of, at the, let me guess, right at the exit of the store. And we're just going to pile all these contaminated masks at the exit of Walmart, for example. No hazmat, nothing. I, I think that's ridiculous. I think that we're, we're missing the big picture here. Um, I think that we were supposed to lower the curve. That was the whole point of this. And we have. The hospitals literally furloughed people because they had nothing to do. And now they're getting back to normal because guess what? They aren't overwhelmed. So I don't see why we wait till this point. It seems very political. It doesn't seem to make any sense based on science. And I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Next, we have LGK20. 
um, please unmute yourself and spell a uh, say and spell your last name and also give your address. LGK20. Okay, we will move on to Nicole uh, Seleski. Nicole Seleski, please unmute yourself and say and spell your last name for the um, committee, for the council, and then also give your address. Um, Nicole Seleski, S-A-L-E-S-K-E, Tulip Lane, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Okay. Okay. So both the mayor and Chris Wilkie, CEO of Bell and Health, pointed out that they were seeing increased numbers of cases since the stay-at-home order has been lifted. With increased testing, of course there are going to be increased cases, but who's really suffering? To date, there have been 46 deaths in Brown County from COVID-19, 846 deaths in all of Wisconsin. According to the Wisconsin Department of Health Services, 36 of those deaths happened shortly or after the state fair at home order was lifted. So in Brown County, we've seen eight deaths, four of them preliminary since June 1st. We have not seen an increase in deaths. In contrast, we've appreciated a decrease in these deaths. This is consistent with the national data from the CDC, which explains the mortality due to COVID-19 is actually on the decline for the 12th week in a row. And not only that, but they lump the COVID deaths together with pneumonia and influenza-like illnesses. So their data includes death from influenza, pneumonia, or COVID-19. To put this in perspective, in 2017, there were 920 deaths from influenza and pneumonia in Wisconsin. To date, there are 846 deaths in Wisconsin due to pneumonia, influenza, or COVID-19. How come we're not seeing an exponential growth in incidence of these numbers if this virus is as serious as we claim it to be? Brown County has 3,348 cases to, to date with a population of about 260,000 people. This is an infection rate of 1.288%. This is hardly a threat to our medical system. In fact, it was argued without a handle on this infection rate, they were nervous we would overwhelm our hospital. But in contrast, nurses, nurse practitioners, physicians, and support staff have been furloughed without work because we're waiting for a way that's yet to come. In fact, according to Wisconsin Hospital Association, right now in the top 10 hospitals in Northeast Wisconsin, there are currently 18 inpatients with COVID-19 results testing, 13 ICU COVID, and 34 total COVID-19 patients in our hospitals today, which has actually decreased. Of those 10 hospitals, there's 50 ICU beds, 109 med surge beds, 97 negative flow isolation beds immediately available. Putting mandates on people has never been about decreasing the number of cases. It's to not overwhelm our hospitals, and clearly, they're not overwhelmed. Finally, to quote Alderman Scannell concerning people that are against this mandate, they're making a political statement using their political ideology, whatever it is, to make a decision um, on a medical matter. You do not have the right to threaten and risk other people's health. It's our job to make sure our community is safe. I completely agree that this is a medical decision that has to be made in the best interest of everyone. You cannot give a blood transfusion, a med, a surgery, a recommendation without their consent. The blame was um, you have to protect people. So, so pardon me, Alderman Scandal, when I point out that you are the one that's making this political. You made this political when you brought it and, and have it to be a forced mandate in front of Green Bay. And we're just asking for that right to choose. Where does this stop? And my sincere hope that it stops today, now, with this vote. We thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next, next is Chris, sorry, Chris Waleski. Uh, Ms. Waleski, please unmute yourself, say and spell your last name for the committee and give your address. My name is Chris Waleski, C-H-R-I-S-W-O-L-E-S-K-E, and I live on Antelope Trail. Thank you, uh, council members, for uh, hosting this uh, event tonight and allowing uh, the public to speak. And um, really giving, I think, consideration and to try to understand and appreciate the many perspectives, I think, on this issue. And, and there certainly are, are many perspectives. I'm here um, tonight from a healthcare perspective. Uh, all of the local healthcare systems have signed on to a letter supporting uh, a masking ordinance. And um, because it has been shown masking has been shown to significantly slow the spread of COVID-19. Um, I would like to uh, reinforce the idea of masking in the current context in particular, because I, I do very much appreciate the fact that 
we were very successful in flattening the curve uh, during the stay at home order. And people, uh, for the most part, were staying home. There weren't events, there weren't, um, a lot of uh, places weren't open. And so um, the staying at home really helped us. Today, we want businesses to be able to be open. We want, as healthcare, to be able to continue to provide care to the entire community. We want to see the schools be able to safely open in the fall. We think that is very important all of these things to the health and well-being of the communities in this region. And so that is why we support uh, masking to continue to help us to flatten the curve. The question about, um, there is a difference between healthcare masks and the uh, face coverings that are being proposed as part of just the general public and how to care for those. So first of all, a face covering can be anything. You can tie a t-shirt, you can tie um, a bandana, a scarf, anything, um, fabric with the, uh, that is multiply would work. So it doesn't have to all be disposable. Um, second, when healthcare workers are wearing a, a surgical mask or a healthcare grade mask, they are doing that to protect themselves from um, viruses and the transmission of um, communicable disease. When they do that, the, um, the virus is on the outside. And so there is a different methodology in terms of donning and doffing that is very sophisticated uh, that they have to be very careful about. In our case, when we're the public and we're wearing a mask, we're, we're protecting others. So the, the potential for the virus is on the inside of our mask. And so when we are touching the outside of the mask, again, you know, there could be contaminants from other places. Yes, so we need to make sure that we're washing our hands and that we're not touching our face. Um, but taking that mask on and off is not nearly as um, complex as the healthcare mask. And I just wanted to um, point that out because that um, issue had been raised. So again, just on behalf of healthcare, it's important to us that we be able to care for everyone in the community. And we believe that the best chance of allowing business and schools and healthcare to continue to do that is with uh, universal masking. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Waleski. Next, we have Tara Zacher. Ms. Zacher, please unmute yourself and say and spell your last name for the committee as well as provide your address. Sure, uh, my name is Tara Zacher. My last name is spelled C-Z-A-C-H-O-R and I live at 1584 Park Haven Road in the town of Lawrence. However, my husband works in the city of Green Bay and my stepdaughters also live in Green Bay part of the time. Um, so I have numerous questions and concerns regarding mask mandates. What is the gating criteria? Is it a level of infection rate in Brown County or Green Bay? Is it the death rate in Brown County or Green Bay? What metric will be used to lift any potential face man a mask mandate? Will we be masked until those in favor of masks just feel safer? Are feelings uh, specifically fear the prime metric we are using to justify the masking of predominantly healthy citizens? There must be a practical goal that community members can monitor and strive for. Uh, per Wisconsin DHS, as of today, 3,596 Brown County residents had COVID-19 symptoms, onset or diagnosis. The population is 2, 000, or, uh, 264,542 as of the last census. So the current total Brown County COVID-19 infection rate is like 1.36%. And per Wisconsin DHH, uh, DHS, as of today, the current Brown County fatality rate is 1%. Does the fatality rate need to be 0% to end a mask mandate? What about the infection rate? Also, according to Wisconsin DHS, 77% of all those who tested positive in Wisconsin has recovered. Um, I guess let's talk about California. Governor Newsom mandated that face coverings be worn stateside while, any in, or while in any indoor public space. In spite of those strict directives, cases have continued to rise in the state, continuing an upward trend that was already in full swing when the mask mandate went into effect. According to Johns Hopkins University, the average daily cases in California have increased from 3,385 on the day of Newsom's order to 8,889 as of July 16th, uh, 16th an increase of 162%. Um, the whole premise of this pro proposal is that we know better than you about your health. We need to control your uneducated, uncaring, incompetent, and otherwise irresponsible behavior for the greater good of the community. Um, people can disagree reasonably about whether or not they feel that masks help, 
That's not what is happening. People who feel masks help are ex actively excluding those who disagree. One group is saying you must do as I tell you because I believe I am right and you are wrong. And the other is saying you are free to do as you choose. The other thing I wanted to point out is have medical professionals ever been wrong before? Does one need a medical degree or letters, uh, the letters MD after our names uh, to be educated on this topic? The medical establishment comprising of doctors, regulatory authorities, licensing bodies um, is often seen as the last word on health practices. It's considered an, an infallible institution immune to error. However, its track record has fatal blunders that um, you know, cause, uh, come at a high price to society. DDT was once considered safe. Thalidomide, Vioxx, um, it was, uh, mercury, um, it was used in teething powders and creams. Um, I'm not comparing these other atrocities to wearing a mask, but I'm showing that medical doctors also have been seriously wrong before. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Justin Steiner. Mr. Steiner, please unmute yourself, say and spell your last name for the committee, and then provide your address. Can you hear me? Yes. Great, thank you. Uh, my name is Justin Steiner, last name S-T-E. I N E R. I live on Anderson Drive in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Go ahead. All right, thank you. Um, I'm coming to you guys today as somebody with a disability. Um, I can tell you right now, uh, right today, that I have already been discriminated against because I have not worn a mask. Um, I cannot physically wear a mask, uh, even though the CDC website does say that people who cannot put on or take off a mask by themselves without assistance, which I cannot do, um, should not be wearing one. And yet in local stores and by residents in Green Bay, I have gotten some pretty serious glares and also people commenting on why I'm not wearing a mask. Um, I, I, I feel discriminated against and there's no reason why any of us should feel discriminated against because of that. Um, I, the, there's been a lot of good points that have been said tonight, and I just want to reiterate a couple of them. Um, one of them is uh, Mr. Uh, Shea. I did was watching your uh, video while somebody was talking on um, masks being effective against preventing uh, stuff from going in and out. And as you might have seen from his video, you could see that the air going through his mask from his vape was clearly visible. Uh, obviously, a standard face covering isn't going to do anything. So why are we recommending it? Also, another point I want to bring up today, I did notice that uh, uh, Police Chief Smith is in attendance today. Um, honestly, I, I feel bad for him because if this is a mandate, how in the heck are we supposed to enforce something like this? There's already, um, they're already struggling to keep up with other legitimate uh, cases that need to um, be addressed in the city of Green Bay, and by cases I mean emergencies, um, and taking their resources and bringing that towards people who aren't wearing a mask, that is just opening the door for more crime in the city because the, the criminals will know that the police are gonna be busy doing other things, and that's not safe. We can't do something like that. Um, that that is really all I had to say. Um, thank you so much for listening to me, and I seriously hope that you guys will consider this um, not as a point of opinion for yourselves. Uh, no matter what you think, I, I, I really hope and pray that you cast aside your own personal opinions while you cast this vote, and you listen to the people that you represent. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, Mr. Steiner. Next, we have Sherry Reef. Ms. Reef, please unmute yourself, say and spell your last name, and give your address for the council. Um, thank you. My last name is um, Reef, R E I F, and my address is 1639 Farland Avenue, and that's in Green Bay um, on the east side. Go ahead. So, um, everyone has touched on a lot of what I wanted to touch on, and I just wanted to say that this isn't for me, it's not a pro mask or an anti mask. I know plenty of people that are pro mask and they are just livid about this blatant overreach of government. And I would feel the same way if we were looking at mandating that people couldn't wear masks because they're associated with criminal activity. 
And so they would be forced out of stores and things like that. Um, also, if you look at the masks in, you know, the ones that are being purchased, they all say right on the box that they're not made for this. They don't keep anything out. I've talked to several doctors and nurses and they have not said what the um, professional on here um, earlier have said. They have said it doesn't do anything. By the end of their shift, they're tasting their spit, um, increased sinus headaches. Um, the masks are saturated. People are touching their face more with masks. And this is really difficult for me because um, I have PTSD because I am a rape and a abuse survivor. And it's already hard enough for me to go into places where everyone is masked. And if this becomes a mandate, it's already bad enough that the stores are doing it, but they're being very nice, um, at least from what I have run into um, when there's medical reasonings, regardless of what those medical reasonings are. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna drive other people to start attacking us and people like myself have already been victimized enough and you're going to force us to continue to be victimized by putting through a mandate like this and it's not right i keep my kids home out of respect for other people because regardless of my feelings of how masks work or don't work or the numbers which i do not believe are true. We've already seen every day we see that numbers are wrong all over the country. So the counts we can't believe. But I keep my kids home out of the respect. I don't go places a lot out of respect, especially because I can't wear a mask. But I shouldn't be afraid now to go to the store because people are going to start attacking me because the government says you have to wear a mask. And they're not going to care that I say that I have a medical reason. And where does this mandating stop? Does it stop at forced vaccines? Because I'm not going to take a rush through um, vaccine. Does it does it stop when we carry papers? You know, where where do we draw the line? And we just you, it's not right. And I'm also hard of hearing. So top that onto that um, masking makes it real fun for me to try and understand what a cashier says. So please don't make this a mandate because you're just victimizing us more. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reef. Next, we have Kathy Patsky. Ms. Patsky, please unmute yourself, say and spell your last name for the council and also provide your address. I'm Kathy Patsky, P-A-T-Z-K-E. I live at 2423 Crest Lane in Green Bay. Um, I really appreciate this opportunity. Um, it's been very helpful to hear um, some legitimate reasons why people might be opposed to masks, and I appreciate that opportunity too. Um, I'm an elementary reading interventionist in Green Bay, and I desperately want to get back to interacting with my young students. Um, I've missed them dearly. Teaching reading and writing is dramatically more effective in person. Um, I also was so saddened during the closure when several sets of parents became very ill with COVID and just struggled to care for their kids. Um, it was very, very hard to see. I'm also hard of hearing, so pop that onto that um, masking makes it real fun for me to try and understand what a cashier says. So please don't make this a mandate because you're just victimizing us more. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure what's happening, but um, I'm also... A mom of a daughter who wants to spend her senior year of high school in school, and it looks very unlikely that this will happen if the conditions Next we have continue. Kathy Patsky. Ms. Patsky, please unmute yourself, say and spell your last name for the council, and also provide your address. Uh, Mayor, I, we are seeing a uh, technical difficulty. ZKE. I live at 2423 Crest Lane in Green Bay. Go uh, Mayor, can you? I really appreciate this yes. opportunity. Uh, Ms. Jeffries, why, why don't you mute everybody? Sure. D uh, forgive us one second, Ms. Patsky. I think, we, but there's a playback issue. Could you just give me one second to contact um, our IT director, Mayor, and everyone? Thank you. I think Randy should sing. 
Asala mio. Okay, I'll change my mind. <laughs> I think that would happen pretty quick. <laughs> Ms. Jeffries, I think it was just an issue of somebody else being unmuted and us being able to hear it being played back. So I think with everybody muted, with the exception of Ms. Patsky, we should, we could be able to we should be able to move forward. Okay, I just stepped away to um, call Mike. <laughs> so uh, I think it was just an issue with people being unmuted. So just let's move forward with Ms. Patsky. Okay. All right. Thank you. Did you want me to repeat what I'd already said, or just keep going? Uh, just hold on one second, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Oh, got it. Okay, got it. All right, thank you. All right. Sorry, Mayor, and sorry, Ms. Patsky. Just give me one second. Ms. Patsky, if you'd like to begin again, that would be wonderful. Go right. You don't have to spell and say your name again. Just begin with your testimony. Can you hear me, Ms. Patsky? I don't know, maybe. Boy. Okay, now can you hear me? Oh, okay, there we go. Okay. All right, you, you know, go right ahead. You don't have to say your name or anything again for the committee. You can just begin your testimony all over again. Thank you so much for your patience. No problem. Um, okay, so again, I just appreciate hearing other perspectives. Um, I am an elementary reading interventionist and I really missed my kids during closure. I desperately want to get back um, because reading and writing is dramatically more effective in person. Um, and again, I have a daughter who's going to be a senior in high school. I want her to get back to school. Um, but I am concerned that things are getting more serious. And I think um, people mentioned the current data, but the hospitalizations and the mortality could get worse because there's always at least a two week lag behind the spike in cases. Um, I do know um, personally parents of some of my students that became very ill and struggled to take care of their kids, made it very hard for them to be educated during that time. Um, I recently came from North Carolina where they've had a terrible surge in cases, hospitalizations, and um, deaths. And so they have instituted a statewide mandate recently so while I was there, I felt so much safer in North Carolina than I do here. Um, when you went to an outdoor restaurant, you were free to take your mask off while you were sitting and, and eating with your group. But then the minute you stood up and were um, with others, you did wear a mask. Um, same in stores, same in gas stations. Um, I was asked one time I ran into the gas station. I had to go to the bathroom. I forgot to put on my mask. I was asked to leave. I promptly did, and I was appreciative of that reminder. Um, I just felt safer because I felt um, that I didn't know if I might unknowingly have the virus, and I felt that I would not be spreading it. I felt that the other people in the gas station, strangers, um, I was not in as much danger if they were wearing masks. Um, so I undoubtedly felt safer there than I do here right now. Um, I just beg the city council to stand up and, and protect us. Um, I really do think masks help and I don't think they can hurt in any way. I do not think it is that difficult to wear a mask. I understand there might be cases of disability and perhaps there could be some kind of um, visual that people could wear to signify that they are exempt from wearing this, the masks. Um, but I do think it's a simple way to protect others if one has the virus without knowing it. Um, I just don't think there is a place for freedoms that spread disease, much the same as I don't think it's um, a freedom to smoke in public and spread the smoke through the air to other people. I don't think we should be spreading the virus through the air um, without masks either. Um, so I just um, appreciate your concern and for bringing this up and hope that you will pass this ordinance. Thank you, Ms. Patsky. Next, we have Martin W. 
Martin W., please unmute yourself, say and spell your last name for the council, and also provide your address. Martin W. Okay, thank you. Moving on to Kevin. Kevin, please unmute yourself, say and spell your last name, say your first name, spell your last name for the council and also provide your address. My name is Kevin Yeager, J-A-E-G-E-R. I live at, at Remington Road, 54302. Thank you, go ahead. All right, um, I felt so inclined to speak today on the topic of masks because my great grand uncle was a stand fear in the Wafrin SS in charge of Esther Group in A in Lithuania. He would go into towns and he would use the town folk to round up all of the socialists and all of the ethnically different people and he would use them to mark them and then he would hand out little identifiers to mark them. He would let a little bit of time go by and then he would raise a hullabaloo with the town again trying to incorporate the townsfolk to expel these people. He did that to 137,000 people across Central Europe. I guess the thought of being mandated to wear any piece of clothing absolutely terrifies me to the core when I think about the pain and the suffering that it's brought upon my family throughout history and what my family had projected onto thousands of people across Europe. And I think that this is a very slippery slope that needs to be weighed very, very heavily on your conscience before you vote. Because what are we gonna do with the police to the people that refuse to comply? Are we gonna take them away somewhere? Are we just gonna, is it gonna just start with money? Where does it end? I guess at that point, I will, I'll wrap up the rest of my time with a quote from Benjamin Franklin. Those willing to sacrifice a little bit of essential freedom for temporary security deserve neither. Thank you all for having me. Thank you, Mr. Yeager. Yeah, I don't think so either. Give me one moment. Okay, next we have Dr. Kristen Lyerly. Um, Dr. Lyerly, please unmute yourself, say and spell your last name for the council and also provide your address. My name is Dr. Kristen Lyerly. It's L-Y-E-R-L-Y. -E -L I live at 3500 Meadow Sound Drive in De Pere. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Pulling up my notes here. So I am an obstetrician gynecologist and a fellow of the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. And I represent myself as a member of that organization today, as well as a physician who cares for moms, babies, and families. I'm here to stress the importance of following the advice of medical experts and public health professionals when it comes to the prevention of COVID. Just yesterday, a joint letter was published. The American Academy of Family Physicians, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American College of, Obst of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, the American College of Physicians, the American Osteopathic Association, and the American Psychiatric Association all stand together to, quote, recognize the indispensable role that public health and scientific experts have in curbing the current pandemic. So why is this? Well, my perspective as an OBGYN is that the latest data suggests that pregnant women may be at increased risk for certain manifestations of severe illness due to COVID-19, such as intensive care unit admission and need for mechanical ventilation. I care deeply about these women and based on many of your testimonies, I hear that many of you do too. As a physician and a community member, I also recognize that it is our common responsibility 
to protect other vulnerable populations, including the elderly, the immunocompromised, and as mentioned earlier, the nearly 25% of Brown County citizens who have lung problems, they're vulnerable. We know that 40% of the spread is by asymptomatic people, and it's spread primarily by respiratory droplets. So where is the science? The evidence is evolving. Case studies strongly support mask use. There are no randomized control trials because they take time and we don't have that time right now. Importantly, there is no data in opposition to face mask use. So it doesn't increase face touching and irritation is preventable. And as far as lack of carbon dioxide, that doesn't seem to affect surgeons, myself included. Importantly, if two people are wearing masks, those big droplets will be stopped by the mask and very small viral particles can travel about five feet away from each individual. But when an infected person is not wearing a mask, those small viral particles can float through the air 30 feet or more and stay alive for up to 30 hours. So I'm asking you as a physician, a mom, and a community member, please support masks. Heed social distancing, wash your hands and disinfect surfaces. Let's take care of each other, especially our most vulnerable. Thank you, Dr. Wiley. You got it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And next we have LGK20. LGK20, please unmute yourself. Say and spell your last name for the council and also provide your address. Uh, LGK20, I believe you are unmuted. So please go ahead and say and spell your, your first, say your first name, spell your last name, and give your address for the council. LGK20. All right, moving on um, to Kimberly Vote. Uh, I think I mispronounced your last name. Can you please um, say your first name and spell your last name for the, the council and also provide your address? Yes, my name is Kimberly, last name Vote. It's V as in violin, O-G-T. I live at 3071 Gothic Court here in Green Bay. And I would say um, thank you for all giving us the time to speak. Um, I wanted to start by saying I, I found it rather ironic that the committee started with the Pledge of Allegiance and in the very end of the allegiance it talks about liberty and justice for all. And quite frankly, what this ordinance um, is doing is not providing justice and liberty for all. I think some other people have brought up the statistics and the data and I could go over that again, but I don't know that that is really what is being looked at or listened to. You also talked about <clears throat> representation. That's what this board is about. And I have to say, if that's what this was about, then the meeting that was held on July 13th, where all of the people did chime in and there was a vote taken. And the vote was ultimately that this was not to move forward. And the mayor took it upon himself to go against what his uh, people are wishing and to go on to TV and say he's going to mandate this ordinance. With that being said, I, I'm glad the, the mayor of Dick Pierre is also supporting you, um, but he doesn't represent me, he doesn't represent the people in Green Bay. Uh, and what I find very um, sad is what you're doing is putting Green Bay people against each other. You're making it difficult for people who may have a medical issue, who may have some sort of other issue, and you are going against HIPAA rules and you are going against the American with Disability Act to the point where we have to tell if we have a problem, if we are unable to wear a mask. And your mandate has not gone into effect, but the looks that people give you in the grocery store as of right now is dangerous. And I did take the time to go through every packet. What's so dangerous? 
excuse me, sir, it's my time. What is so dangerous? People are giving you dirty looks. People are accosting you. People are telling, like looking at you like you have no right to be there. That is dangerous. Now, I would like some of my time back. I took the time to print out this document. And one of my main concerns is now you're going to make the businesses be the one that mandate this. And they're having a tough enough time. So I've been in the stores and everyone is thinking this mask is your savior. Well, who is going to go around and tell the people who think they're using the masks appropriately they are not? Because if you go into any store, you're going to see people right here. The nose is out. This is not appropriate. They think they are. Now someone has to tell them they're not. Other people have it down here while they're talking. They're not appropriate. Are the cops going to be called? Are the people in the store going to have to tell people they have to leave because they're not using this right? Now I'm going to touch it. Now it's not doing any good. The boxes say they don't do any good. Um, so I think it's, it's shameful that now our police department are going to be called out to, to debate this mask. Um, with the other part, the sunset clause is, uh, goes on that this can go on indefinitely until such time as it is deemed not necessary. That is not a set time. So there are some... Thank you, Ms. Boat. Your time has expired. I feel I should have had more time since... I, I did actually give you more time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Thomas Matson. Mr. Matson, please unmute yourself. Say your first name and spell your last name for the council and also provide your address. Mr. Matson. Mr. Matson. Okay, thank you. Um, next we have Maddie Barris. Um, Maddie Barris, please unmute yourself, say your first name and spell your last name for the council and provide your address. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so actually, I'm sorry, the only way I could get on is through my daughter. So um, I'm Erin Barris. I'm at 117 Swiss Meadow Lane in Green Bay. And can you spell your last name, please? Yes, Barris, B as in boy, E-R-E-S. Thank you so much. Please go ahead. Yes, so I, I understand there's so much tension around this topic, and it, it honestly hurts my heart. <laughs> so um, uh, it's not hard. I have a son with autism, and he has struggled putting on the mask. He, uh, it's difficult for him as well. Um, but in order to save one person, I truly believe in this. There were 85 babies in the ICU in a place in Texas. So you can't bring up abortion and you can't bring up all these different issues about immune systems and whatnot. They haven't even lived a year and they're in the ICU dealing with this. Um, wear a mask. It doesn't hurt. It will, it, you know what, and if my son can't wear one because it's too hard for too long, then I will put a message on him that lets people know or he can't go in. Um, it is so important. It's not about you. It's not about any of you. It is about other people. And I just don't get why that's so hard to put a mask over your face. I just don't get it. And maybe, guess what? Maybe it doesn't work 100% of the time because this is, like the doctor said, this is new. We don't understand it all. We don't get it 100% and we won't for a long time. But it's not that hard. And if it is that hard, then let people know. Because I'm pretty sure that if you're one of the people and very few of you, that if you can't put on a mask, I'm pretty sure if you let people know how hard this is, they're gonna sympathize with you. It's not that hard. It's about communication. It's about saying what you can do, what you can't do, 
It's about communicating. It's about respect. It's about education. It's about, guess what? None of us have all the answers right now. None. Every single person I listen to, you don't have the answers, nor do I. So be a little nicer, be a little kinder, and put a mask on if you can. And if you can't, then explain it. That's my point. Thank you so much, Ms. Barris. Martin W., um, please unmute yourself. Say your first name and spell your last name for the uh, council and also provide your address. My name is Martin Weber, W-E-B-B-E-R. I live at 3307 Beach Lane in Green Bay. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Uh, all, I sent in uh, quite a bit of information to all the older persons, including studies and uh, links, but there was a couple of things I wanted to address before I get to my main uh, subject here. Uh, Chris Valesky mentioned uh, 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 cloth masks. There are studies that say that cloth masks are ineffective, and I have submitted uh, that information. N95 masks, they only pr pr protect the, the wearer, okay? It has a one-way valve on it. Uh, Dr. Lyerly, uh, if pregnant women are, are at risk, then they should quarantine, just like the elderly and other people with uh, uh, comorbidities. Okay, you don't lock down the rest of the population. Um, now, it, it, one thing I have noticed about the medical community is they do not look at the bigger picture, including the economic impl implications here. They just seem to want to deal with the virus, and that's it. They're not taking in the long-term effects uh, of shutting down schools and businesses. And that's going to create just a nightmare. Okay, uh, now my main uh, subject I wanted to cover was Mayor Genrick's uh, suggestion is that business is to enforce this mask mandate. Okay, now you're basically asking many of which are minimum wage employees to become law enforcement. Okay. I submitted links to quite a few news stories about uh, uh, incidents, including physical alterate, altercations cross country where employees are making a mandate to people coming in that are not wearing wet masks and they're being physically assaulted. I, did, I go to uh, Menards quite a bit. One day I was at the service desk and somebody started screaming. And I said to the woman that was helping me, I said, boy, that's, that's not good. She said it happens almost on a daily basis. And she said they've had to have the police come a couple of times because uh, it got physical. This is happening across the country. You've seen the business links I sent you, or the, the links, the news stories uh, regarding this. These are employees. They're terrified to go to work. And that is not what they signed up for. They have no business enforcing this type of thing. And so you're putting businesses and employees at risk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Weber. Next, we have Stefan Kappas. Stefan Kappas, please uh, say your first name, spell your last name for the, for the council, and then also provide your address. Yeah, my name's uh, Stefan Kappas. Kappas is spelled K-A-P-P-E-S. And my address is W-1643 County Road VV, which is in Seymour. But a lot of my business I do like with meeting people is in the city of Green Bay. And I just wanted to mention a bit of my concerns kind of in different areas here. Ones have already been expressed I think kind of on a constitutional level, and I understand this is a very real virus. 
um, but from data that I have just looked at and just from things that I've heard is usually just like with a person that recently mentioned about the mask, only the N95 masks help the individual that's wearing it and the cloth masks and surgical masks do not help because of how the aerosols work. Uh, another thing I wanted to bring kind of more at home is my sister who is pregnant and is working in a workplace which is requiring a mask, but she actually is in conversations with her work about, you know, the options depending on where she is in her workplace and not using it. But she uh, wrote that I'm going to read here about what she's been experiencing. So she, she, she has asthma and recently, you know, over the past year, she didn't really have much symptoms uh, until she started wearing masks again. So I'm going to read a comment she made over a uh, social media. She says it's been causing uh, asthma attacks. If it doesn't escalate to that, I have shortness of breath, dizziness where I almost felt fall over along with headaches and horrible congestion days. I wasn't working and not wearing a mask. I would feel much better. I am also pregnant, which increases my risks while wearing math uh, mask wearing. I was also checking my blood pressure while mask wearing versus not wearing a mask. The mask was causing me hypertension. It would go up to 155 when not even busy or exerting myself at work. Then days I was off and, and walking and exercise, my blood pressure would only get as high as 133. So in the end, it's been far more risky for me to wear them for the small percentage of protection uh, they would give and that was a comment she made so that's what she really experiences so kind of when I see this um, if through her work as businesses have been mandating masks for employees and even for the public but if she does work with her work and they allow certain exceptions and then that changes I kind of can see these kinds of things uh, being an issue and just the last comment here um, maybe not as important as some but if for those who are Christians, this seems approaching a way of what would be known as the mark of the beast, may it sound crazy, but if you can't wear a mask, or, I mean, if you don't wear a mask without going into a store, you can't buy or sell. Uh, so just think of that direction uh, for those of you that are Christians, but for those that aren't, think about the other points I made. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Kappas. Next, we have uh, Julie Baldo Atkinson. Um, please state your first name and spell your last name for the uh, council, and then also provide your address. My name is Julie Baldo Atkinson. My last name, A-T-K-I-N-S-O-N. I live at 830 Christiana Street, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Go ahead. Uh, so I am very much against a government mandated mask requirement uh, for a multitude of reasons. Um, just to kind of take one point off the table, um, I did experience a loss in my family due to COVID. So I am not somebody that's untouched by this virus. I understand that it is deadly, it is dangerous, it is real. Um, and I have done enormous amounts of research, obviously, um, regarding this topic, including masks. Um, and if you actually go out and read the studies and not just take other people's word for what they say, uh, they all make it abundantly clear that people doing normal activities, walking around, not yelling, not screaming, not being in close proximity, the amount of virus they shed, the amount of droplets they shed are either none at all or very little. Like it is just the science isn't there for that, right? And a lot of the medical professionals that have been on have said yes. They always say yes, we're figuring things out, we're developing things. And I would agree with that. They are doing that. They have a hypothesis and they want all of us, the entire community, to be the experiment. 
if we look at the content of the ordinance itself, it in no way or shape says doing this will decrease cases by X percent or X absolute value because they don't know that it will. This is all, you know, a guessing game, right? And we're supposed to just blindly follow um, whatever comes out of the mouth of the talking heads on TV, uh, of doctors who previously said these were not effective, but now say they are. Uh, and it's just not true. And there's a bunch of unintended consequences to this too that other people have touched upon, right? It's gonna increase discrimination of people that can't wear a mask. It's happening even when the mandate's not in effect, right? There's uh, religious exemptions that is not in the ordinance. There's no religious exemption in the ordinance, right? So if I have a, a sincere belief that it's against my religion, I'm still gonna be penalized for that. You know, and we're supposed to believe that um, the only thing that matters is, is science, and that's just inaccurate. We don't elect scientists into political office because there are more things that matter in this world than the dictates of a doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Atkinson. Give me one moment. Uh, Mr. Matt Miller, Matt Miller, please um, say your first name and spell your last name for the council and also provide your address. My name is Matthew Miller, last name M-I-L-L-E-R, and I live on St. Jude Street in Green Bay. Go ahead. Um, again, thank you for uh, granting the time to the public. I, I wasn't sure uh, the public was going to be consulted, and I'm glad to see that it is. Um, first, uh, I do not agree that emergency powers uh, should be used during times of what uh, is little quantifiable emergency, in, in my opinion. Um, smoking, you know, I've heard that being compared and, you know, smoking is a choice. Um, it is not a virus. Uh, you know, nobody is choosing to take up a coronavirus habit. Um, uh, people are, you know, I've noticed taking up a lot of moral conjecture, uh, politicians and uh, fellow citizens alike. Uh, you know, personally, uh, you know, my moral stance, I, I care about people's choices and liberties um, without political bias. You know, I, I care about that um, for all Americans. It's unique to our nation and it's something I, I care about uh, for our citizenry. Um, and I don't mean to sound callous, but, you know, let's face it, you know, people do die every year. Um, I've, I've lost uh, my father, my, my father-in-law, uh, both from disease. Uh, common flu has been killing people for decades. Uh, personally, I don't want to live in, a, in an America with zero risk tolerance. Uh, I, I wouldn't want that for my son. Future generations, there is risk and we take on risk by being alive. It's, it's important that we, uh, we, how we address risk. Um, and I think one of the best ways is to, to address that based on the trust with our fellow Americans. Um, you know, that being said, uh, you know, I just don't feel like we should compromise on our American liber liberties, even though uh, fear uh, pervades. Um, all right, I would say um, also, uh, I am concerned about the mask mandate, mandate uh, creating a, a certain overstatement of the feeling of safety. Uh, you know, I've, I've heard of the, I've referred to the Peltzman effect, I suppose here. Um, you know, are we, are we basically making a, a short-term mandate with a long-term consequence that we don't understand as we've all mentioned data is unfolding. Um, in some ways I, I can envision people saying, oh, well, everybody's wearing masks now. Yay, it's safe, let's go in public. I, I think I've heard a lot of statements uh, on the pro side of the mandate um, saying that they feel safe. Well, it's not gonna be safe. It doesn't just spread that way. There are other ways and it's very important. I think we understand that. Um, I've, I've seen every store I've gone to and certainly myself and how I conduct my behavior, I stay away the six feet. That's been the, the condition, right? I, I would wear a mask if I can't maintain that distance. And I haven't had a trouble doing that in public. Um, this is, uh, I would also say, uh, you know, the evidence is evolving. Um, and again, that's been a, a big piece of this. Uh, we don't understand and yet we're trying to mandate and the rationale is just not seem to be on top of people's mind. And we're in a, in a point of moral conjecture. Uh, re research has shown, you know, I've seen things coming up literally weekly, right? Or even daily, um, 
you know, talking about this broken heart syndrome. I heard that from Aurora Health even this morning. Thank uh, you. Increasingly, Thank you. Yep. Okay. Time has expired. Thank you. Next, we have uh, Seth Johnson. Mr. Johnson, please unmute yourself. Say your first name, spell your last name for the council, and also provide your address. Yes, sorry. It's actually Andrea Johnson. Oh, hello. J-O-H-N-S-O-N, and I live off of Edinburgh Road in Green Bay, 54311. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say first and foremost, thank you to the city council for you guys listening to us, especially the ones that have respected listening um, to us. I realize that the majority of you already have your minds made up as to how you are going to vote for this. I would hope that you truly, all of the information and sides for everyone tonight weigh in on that. We have heard so many different things from doctors and the professionals that are in support of masks. I would love to hear something from a doctor that isn't in support of a mask, but no one had really taken that time to seek out that person to help give a benefit from their side of the story. Um, a lot of points have already been touched on tonight. The one thing um, that is very concerning for me is yesterday in the interview, um, the mayor saying that if you don't wear a mask, this will simply just be trespassing. That is um, probably one of the most ridiculous things I've heard. So now with the system, with everything that has been going on, with all the different economic times, you are now going to put that onto our police system, which then who is going to pay for that? for those calls simply for the fact that someone is not wearing a mask or refusing to wear a mask. And again, every single person then coming in is going to be questioned why I am wearing a mask or why I'm not wearing a mask. That is not liberty. That's not freedom. That's not anything. Um, someone, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Chris Wooler, uh, explained that the mask is to protect yourself and keep your saliva in. I've never known a person that I've come in contact with to spit on me um, or to really spit around me. I, I have never come in contact with that. Um, I feel like everyone is adults and are able to withhold themselves to the six feet. Um, the next point is, and I know somebody else brought it up, um, is the mask used correctly? I go to stores pretty much daily um, and I wear a mask to help protect others, even though I'm not in support of it. Um, I will go ahead and say that half of the people within that time do not wear that mask correctly. So if they sneeze, those particles go over. So how is that going to be uh, enforced as well if it's the fact that now that is going to be trespassing if someone does not wear a mask. Um, thank you. That's all that I have. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Next, we have um, Eric LeQuinn. Uh, Mr. LeQuinn, please unmute yourself. Say your first name, spell your last name, provide your address for the council. My name is Eric Lerquin, L-E-U-R-Q-U-I-N. I reside on South Norwood Avenue in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Go ahead. I'm just pers providing a different sort of perspective. Um, I work for one of the larger employers that just started the mask mandate for the general public. I work for Walmart. Uh, we're now in day two of the mandatory face mask coverings, and there has been little to no issues uh, arising from the, our ask of the customers to wear the face mask. I feel that business owners, event uh, organizers are well within their power to manage this issue on their own, and that... Um, a government mandate by the city of Green Bay is just unnecessary. That is all. Thank you so much, Mr. LeQuinn. Do 
Give me one moment. Okay, next we have Xander Newman. Xander, please uh, unmute yourself, say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Uh, thank you. Name's Xander Newman, N-E-U-M-A-N. I reside on Linden Drive in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Go ahead. Um, so, I'm the son of a nurse who raised me as a single mother for the first 12 years of my life. I'm involved in the whole healthcare situation. This is not about getting people back to work, getting things back to normal right now. This is about trying to keep us safe. And we need to make sure that we're doing what we have to do to keep our family and our community safe. Uh, a, a lot of uh, members of the community have brought up how we aren't certain that the science is there, but even if it isn't, we can't lose this. There's nothing we're losing by wearing masks. And uh, similarly, similarly, a lot of people have brought up the concern about uh, feeling uneasy wearing masks, and that's, that, that is a choice, and I think that is even if that's not allowed within the mandate, I think that's a quick answer or question and answer. You walk into a store, hello, you're not wearing a mask. You answer, oh, I'm sorry, I feel unwell right now. And, and that's something that my family has run into in the past. And the, the dangerous looks people are talking about, that's whether or not the mandate's here, that's not going to stop. And even I myself wearing a mask have gotten like the strange looks for wearing an N95 if, while shopping. Um, I, I think it's just a result of our climate. I don't think this mandate's going to have an effect on those things. But uh, what we need to do is protect our community and make sure that we're staying safe. The curve has been flattened for now, but we need to maintain the flattened curve while transitioning back to normalcy. And if we're going to not require people to wear masks and then go back to normalcy, we are going to see another explosion in cases like we saw uh, a couple months ago. As our president said today, uh, the harsh truth is that things are likely going to be getting worse over the next few weeks and months before they get better. And I think it's everyone's responsibility in our community to ensure we are keeping ourselves as safe as possible. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Newman, thank you. LG K20, I know you've tried a couple of times. Uh, can you unmute yourself and uh, just say a word or two so no, I know you can hear us? I see that you are unmuted, but we cannot hear you. Okay, I'm going to move on. Uh, Noah Becker, please unmute yourself, say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Noah Becker. I'm Noah Beck. Yes, hi. Am I audible? Yes, okay, you absolutely you. are. Go um, right ahead. I'm Noah Becker. I live at 1254 Reed Street, uh, Green Bay 54303. Thank you. And can um, you spell your last name for the council, too? My apologies. B E C K E R. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I will keep this brief. I think you guys have heard most of it. Um, my, I am against a mask ordinance while saying I am strongly pro mask. Um, I definitely wear a mask in, if I'm anywhere close to other people in public. You know, I think that's, I think that's what we should be doing to, if I have any chance of spreading COVID to somebody, I'm going to wear a mask to try to prevent it. But I am a little bit nervous about enforcement. From what I read in the ordinance, um, having businesses try to enforce it, I, I don't know how well it's going to go, to be honest. And I don't want to overtax the police department either. I know those concerns have been brought up. Those, those are the two main concerns I have. I don't know how fair it is to make employees go and confront probably pretty angry people when they're told to put on a mask. Um, I also want to point out that there's already a high level of distrust and anger among the public and the government. Whether that's justified or not is, is irrelevant. It's, it's there. And I think if masks are mandated, 
people who have generally been complying with it are going to stop doing it. That's my worry because that after one, um, when the shutdown first began, people were doing it pretty, everyone was pretty much, you know, in it together for a couple of weeks, but then they started to get distrustful of government. And I think it's just an aspect of, of our culture that, that, that will happen. So I worry that people will stop wearing a mask if we, if the ordinance does get passed. I'm also a little bit concerned about how long it will last. I saw that in the ordinance that the sunset is whenever the state of emergency ends. And I am glad to see a sunset in there, definitely. But I don't know when, when it's going to stop getting renewed, right? Because every council meeting, the, ordinate, the state of emergency seems to have been renewed. So without any end date in sight, I think people will be even less trustful of this. And they'll be less willing to to you know do their part um, than if the ordinance doesn't get passed. Uh, we've seen big retailers have already all forced masks, which they if I owned a business, I certainly would. I think it's the right move. But I I just am worried that people will stop stop wearing masks and might spread it more if the ordinance gets passed. Thank you very much. Appreciate the time. Thank you, Mr. Becker. iPhone Jess, iPhone Jess, please unmute yourself. Say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Um, my name is Jessica Gilbert, uh, spell G I L B E R T, uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin, and my address is 2331 Farland Avenue. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, so I have a few questions. Um, the mayor uh, made his announcement and they brought up new evidence. And I'm kind of confused about this new evidence because the only thing I really see mainly is droplets. And I'd like to see some studies out there that does not involve droplets just because there's other ways of transmission and I've seen so many studies, NIH articles, Oxford articles, stating the opposite. So it seems even the medical studies are flip-flopping. Um, also, in the resolution providing face coverings within the city of Green Bay, it's mostly based off experience. It does um, bring up something about studies but mostly it's about experience and i think it should be more about science um so also like i just i know the smoking was brought up um the co the carbon monoxide from smoking is dangerous but the carbon dioxide from inhaling your own carbon dioxide from breathing by wearing a mask is also dangerous. Uh, Seatbelts, not everybody has to ride in a car. Everybody has to go to a store and get food. There's over 25,000 members on Wisconsinites Against Mandatory Face Masks, the Facebook group. Um, this order ordinance would divide families. It would divide Green Bay. It would divide our country. Um, does Green Bay really want to do uh, start something like this? And also, like family members are shaming and blaming each other. It's getting really dividing. Instead, we need to unite. Um, there's, I want to say that I eat very healthy, and I don't think that the government should dictate what I should do, especially when they may eat fast food or not eat healthy. Uh, the Lancet said 11 million deaths a year are linked to unhealthy diets. Maybe we should start with having healthier diets, educating people about eating healthy instead of this. I don't think it's fair. My body, my choice. Our forefathers fought hard for the Constitution, and we're just giving up rights um, this could be discrimination and it could lead to lawsuits. So many questions, so very little evidence. Who has the right to decide? 
again, my body, my choice. Thank you. Jessica? Okay. Next we have, I believe Thomas Matson. Um, Mayor, did Thomas Matson already speak? I believe he had. Come no, up. I have. No. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. I think you had come up before. Thank you so much. Hold on one second, Miss. Yeah, I tried before. Yes. Sorry for interrupting. Right. Okay, I couldn't recall if you had spoken. Thank you so much. So, say your first name, spell your last name, provide your address. For Thomas Matson, M-A-T-T-S-O-N. Um, I live at 146 Alpine Drive in Green Bay. And I'm, I oh. wanted to chime in because there's a few things that seem to be overlooked. Well, not really overlooked, but a lack of appreciation. The fact that if you guys are really concerned about masks, which I'm not disputing for lots of sick people, it's appropriate to be concerned then the city is the one who should be giving them N99 and N95 masks to these people. Because you're, you're working with the theory that everybody knows what masks they should wear, when almost 99% of the masks that are out there do nothing. Okay, so that's something you might want to consider. And then, of course, you have the liability for giving out the wrong mask and all that kind of stuff. And uh, initially, when this COVID started, they said, don't use the N99 and N95 masks for all of us because it was supposed to be for the hospital workers. So maybe that's going to cause a shortage in the Green Bay. I'm not exactly sure, but it's something you might want to be concerned about. Secondly, earlier we had a doctor that was on and said um, airborne stays um, appropriate or not. Stays in the, COVID stays in the air for 30 hours. I just checked online at Harvard. They said it's three hours max. Um, and then another thing about the lawsuits that somebody brought up, in Georgia, they just went to court to get rid of Alabama's um, or Atlanta or someone down there, so they wanted to have all masks. So the Georgia governor went to court and he got in the court so the city can't mandate masks. So if you do this, it's gonna to go to court, and get overruled right away and we're all wasting our time. Then um, another thing that's interesting, which I think should be taken into account to mitigate the, the fear that's out there, is everybody's saying we've got all these tests and everybody's getting sick. There's two instances that are real important just recently, the White House said they want all COVID test data to be sent to the White House. And Florida magically had reduced their amount of positive tests by 90,000 because they were giving COVID positives to people with asthma. And then in Green Bay, uh, retired um, representative um, wife, uh, uh, Tina Pridemore, Pridemore, I believe her name is, um, she put on her Facebook that herself and her husband went to go get tested. They were lying for three hours. They fill out the information, gave their address, and after three hours, they left. They just received a positive notice that they were sick. Never got tested, okay? That's kind of an important thing. Now, the other thing I would be more concerned about is we have all these old people that are, um, in essence, disabled because they're, well, they're old and having problems. Um, those people that have been forced to stay at home are staying in very hard, very hot apartments and houses and don't have air conditioning and they're being forced to go to hospitals. So if I was going to work on something, I'd work on getting those people air conditioning or get them to a place where they can get some help. Um, basically, it's all I really got to say. I just think that um, this is a massive overreach and you could have done the same thing with people with TB and AIDS saying you're contagious, so we're going to put you away. Didn't happen and this is an overreach. Have a great day, thank you, bye. Thank you, Mr. Matson. Next, we have Michael Adsit. Uh, Mr. Adsit, please say your first name, unmute yourself, say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Mr. Adsit? Oh, okay, I just found the unmute button on the computer and my phone. Can you hear me? Okay, yes, we certainly can. Please say okay. your first name, spell your last name, provide your address. Michael Adsit, A-D-S-I-T, 822 James Street, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54303. Um, I Go ahead. Don't, I don't have a whole lot to say that has not already been said. I just want to say I'm against having the masks mandated, partially because of 
um, just kind of the joy of getting to see smiles on people's faces too. <laughs> it's been fun, but um, we're adults, not children. If businesses do not want people to come in without a mask, they can require it, and that gives the choice to shop or not. And I think letting the people decide with their money that way is a good way to do it. And, um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Adsit. Next, we have Ryan Hatch. Uh, Mr. Hatch, please unmute yourself, say your first name, spell your last name, provide your address for the council. Hi, this is Ryan Hatch, uh, 119 Crestview Lane. I'm in De Pere. Uh, I work in Green Bay. Uh, first of all, thank you for, for allowing us to participate today. Um, <clears throat> I'm in opposition to this, um, but I also want to acknowledge the heart of a lot of people on here that really mean well. Um, our, my grandparent is in uh, an assisted living facility and currently in quarantine. So I, I get it. Like people, some people ha are at high risk. Um, that being said, I think this uh, for a lot of reasons should not be, uh, should not be put in place. Um, for the record, I've been keeping track. We are at a four to one ratio against that's 21 to five. If anyone's keeping track, four to one against. Uh, first of all, I want to say this is unenforceable. Um, the police are unable to regulate this. There's already enough pressure on our police right now. Uh, and you're asking them to take on so much more. I support blue and um, you're asking the impossible of them. Uh, you're also asking the impossible of businesses that have to deal with these confrontations. Uh, secondly, you're going to be dividing the city in half. Um, this is only going to increase tensions when tensions are at a record high. I mean, we all feel it. Something's wrong with the country right now. And you're going to just going to drive a wedge through, through the country. Um, I think that masks are fine. I wear one when I go to the grocery store. I do. Uh, I carry hand sanitizer when we go out in, in around town. We do. I think that you should be able to do whatever you need to protect your family. And I think I believe in freedom of choice uh, for your family and for your business. Uh, three, you're ignoring the practical failures. This just isn't going to work, right? Like children are excluded. My children are playing with the other kids on the playground. Like you, you're not going to prevent that from happening. This is going to happen in every neighborhood, everywhere. Um, this isn't going to stop what you think it is. And there's all these practical failures. You saw um, Michael Shea. He was right uh, smoking right through uh, the cloth. The N95 only protects the wearer. It exposes the public, right? Uh, this is totally not going to have the desired effect. So it'll make you feel good, but on a practical level, it is it will it will fail. Fourth, um, we're making decisions based on flawed data. Uh, the, the false positive rate is 50%. That means half the people that are testing positive actually don't have it. The testing's flawed. And there's so many more reasons, but I, I'm going to come to this. I believe that you should have a strong suggestion for a mask. Sure, come out with that. Say, hey, we believe there should be, a, everyone should wear a mask, that's fine. But I believe that private private business and, and families should make the decision. Freedom is under attack in the country right now. And I think it's up to us to, to say, it's up to the family to decide, it's up to the business to decide what is right for them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hatch. Next, we have Nate Hyde. Mr. Hyde, please unmute yourself, say your first name, spell your last name, provide your address for the council. Good evening. Um, name is Nathan Hyde. Last name is H-Y-D-E. I live at 671 Sunnycrest Street in Green Bay. Sunnycrest Street. Oh, so I'm sorry, you cut out there. Oh, sorry. You um, That's okay, I'm so sorry. You cut out, can you repeat your address one more time? Yep, 671 Sunnycrest. Great, thank you. Go ahead. First, thank you for allowing me to speak this evening. Um, I, I, I've, I've heard some, some fun comments uh, this evening. So we'll start with the first one, that uh, some people won't wear a mask properly. While, while that is true, um, it's, it's still gonna have a positive benefit if we were to have a mandate throughout our community. Um, not everybody wears a seatbelt properly. Not everybody washes their hands properly. However, 
if there is still an added benefit from washing your hands for five seconds as opposed to 20 seconds. Secondly, we continue to hear about how this is tyranny that our, our local government or, or state government or federal government wants to require masks. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Where, where are all of these tyranny warriors when we have to wear pants or shoes or shirts into the grocery store? I don't hear people saying that that's tyranny. Um, so that, that's another asinine argument. Additionally, unless all the parents that are on this phone call, unless you want to play teacher again this fall, in winter and spring, when our kids are supposed to go back to school, it is extremely vital that we get this virus under control. So once again, if you want your kids to go back to school, it is extremely important that we get this under control. And one way we can do that is wear a mask. It's very, very simple, people. Wear a mask. Additionally, we have proven as a community over the last four months that we can't be trusted to do the right thing. When the Supreme Court ruled that the stay at home order had to be lifted, we had people at the bars that same night pretending like the pandemic was over. And it's not, it's still here. Yes, this is hard. Yes, this is painful. Yes, this is very inconvenient. But requiring our community to wear a mask is another inconvenience, but it's the right thing to do. And we need to do it as a community. That is all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hyde. Just give me one second. Next, we have Britton Durham. Britton, please uh, unmute yourself, say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we certainly can. Okay, so before I say my name, uh, so someone so kindly messaged me on Facebook because I thought you really had to raise your hand, and so I've been raising my hand through the entire meeting. Uh, and there are some other people on the call that still have their hands raised, and, and so they messaged me that there's a setting in this meeting or Zoom thing that says uh, raise and lower hand. So if you're still raising your hand and you haven't clicked that setting, she's not going to see you. Um, so that, I had to say that. Um, so my name is Britton Durham. I live at a, uh, 1124 14th Avenue in Green Bay. Is that all you need? Okay. Thank you so much. Am I good? Yes, you are. Go right ahead. Okay. So um, I just first want to say thanks to the city council for letting us speak. Um, I respect everybody's opinions. Um, so I'm an Afghanistan war veteran, and I kind of, you know, took issue with uh, Mayor Gingrich saying that it's just a small sacrifice. So I joined the military after 9-11 to make that sacrifice uh, for um, our freedoms and to protect this country. Uh, but with sacrifices come loss of freedoms and choice. And so we get so used to saying that we want to be safe and everything like that, but it's one, it's one additional thing. So we got to go through airport screening. We got to be monitored by the NSA uh, and all these other things. So uh, just a couple things that haven't been addressed tonight um, is the infection fatality rate for uh, COVID-19 by this reported by the CDC on a reason article on 524-2020 is around 0.03. The flu is currently 0.01. Um, additionally, who's out to gain uh, from this pandemic, and I'm not saying that COVID isn't real. I'm saying that it is real. I believe that um, you know it does cause serious injuries and people to die, unfortunately. But who's out to gain? So every time a hospital patient is admitted to the hospital, they get thirteen thousand dollars from Medicare. When people with COVID are put on ventilators, they're getting thirty-nine thousand um, dollars. The AstraZeneca was saying today that they would have 1.5 billion vaccines produced by the end of next year. So who's making that money? So I'm just saying that um, I, I'm not for a mask mandate. Just I wear my mask when I go out in public. I'm just saying that it's unenforceable. Um, I get it. You know, people should be wearing masks, but I, I don't think we should put the, the resources and the strain 
on our local law enforcement and have to uh, manage um, having businesses enforcing that rule. Additionally, um, who I haven't heard anything in the media in regards to how these testing are these tests are being completed. So, so globalresearch.ca is a very good news site if you're interested in getting a different uh, perspective on COVID, foreign policy, and everything like that. And that you know the PCR tests are not they're basically meaningless. So there is no gold standard to measure the PCR test that is being conducted to allege that people have contracted COVID-19. So there's always a big picture. I just want people to open their eyes to that. Uh, you give a little, we lose more. Thank you so much for your time. Have a good night. Thank you, Mr. Durham. Next, we have Jason Davies. Um, Jason Davies, please uh, unmute yourself. Say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Good evening, City Council. My name is Jason Davies. I am a resident in the city of Green Bay, located at 3490 Spyglass Hill Drive, uh, District 1. Uh, thank you uh, for your time. Um, the reason I am here tonight was by invite of several people I know all of you have made your decisions already, so I'm not going to harp to the choir about what may be a better choice or what may be a worse choice. Uh, but let's talk about mask facts uh, in a way that is applicable to Green Bay. We have a lot of waste with disposable masks that we're handing out. Um, I see them littered all over the sidewalks. I see them flung out of people's cars. And personally, it's hazardous. Um, if I do work in a hospital or if I do work outside of an ER as a contractor, as whatever job of the four companies I run, one of the things I have to be cognizant of is air quality. Um, if I go into St. Vincent Hospital, for example, and I start drilling holes in walls, I have to set up HEPA filters. I have to ensure that I'm not doing stuff that's destructive to the ER. I have to ensure that dust that I'm making is adequately taken care of. And so the fact that we're demanding people walk into stores, here's a free mask, and they're spitting in it, coughing in it, being unhygienic, those who've taken time to not brush their teeth or brush their teeth have mouth diseases, have oral diseases, canker sores, pustules, etc. They're pushing that all into basically what we're claiming by health fact is a filter. And this filter is then coming off of people. It's being touched by bare hands. It's being smeared on faces as they're pulling this off. And two things are happening. One, it's getting hung on the car mirror and it's creating traffic hazards. Secondly, something more relevant is it's going back on the person, getting smeared around some more. And now that this bacteria has had time to flourish, it's all over these people's faces. They sit down not washing hands because society can't be trusted, right? We are five seconds in, five seconds out. We're licking stuff, touching it, and then we're touching the table surfaces. So it's good that we have cleanliness and common sense and disinfectants and whatnot. But what I'd like to implore all of you to think about the reality of this is, why is there no biohazard disposal anywhere mandated? Why outside of a store is there not a red canister that says this mask that's been taken off of someone may have COVID on it, but it may have strep on it, it may have measles on it, it may have the flu bug, it may have pseudomonas, it may have the most disgusting bacteria, the most disgusting virus on the planet. And you're saying it's okay to take it with you, fling it around, bring it out into the air without any education towards any of our citizens in Green Bay. You're saying, do this, shove a t-shirt over yourself, you're good, you should know what you're doing. You're a responsible citizen, you voted, you obviously elected the right officials to do the job, so I implore you, elected officials, educate the public. Don't waste our time with rhetoric and creating crazy stories. Let's be effective in our learning and hope that everyone can come together to a conclusion. Have a great night. Thank you, Mr. Davies. Okay, LG K20. Hopefully we can hear you this time. Can you say a word? This is Leanne. Okay, hold on one second. Um, so Ms. Kramer, I uh, see so you're unmuted. Please say your first name, spell your last name, and give your address 
for the council. All right. So this is Leanne Kramer, C R A M E R, 702 Neville Avenue in Green Bay. Um, I have a couple of things. Number one, the, I was out on the CDC site. People keep talking about this as a pandemic. We are very close to an epidemic. Epidemic is the threshold is 5.7 and we are at 6.4. Um, to the gentleman before about saying that we need to be wearing masks for to get our kids back into schools, the way that the teachers union is going right now, that will not happen. My opinion on that is fire all the teachers. If they don't want to get back into the schools, fire them. Um, furthermore, most of the TV stations were doing polls on Facebook. And even Green Bay Press Gazette did a poll. And out of all those polls, they ran them for like six days. Every single one of them was like a 70% to like a 40 to maybe 50% that did not want the mask ordinance. Like I told another alderman, I said, you can highly suggest that citizens wear it. We are all adults. We know what is right for us. We have brains. We're not stupid people. Treat us like adults. We're not kids. So highly suggest that we wear a mask. But you're also, I've been reading lots of um a, a private group that I belong to and there are people that own businesses in Green Bay or lease buildings in Green Bay and have already said this mass ordinance goes into place. They are going to be breaking their lease or selling their, moving their business out of Green Bay. So we're going to end up with lost revenue and going back to John Vanderlease's opening statement. City employees are already talking about furloughs and wages being cut. Well, if people start losing businesses and they start moving out of the city, we're going to have loss of tax revenue. So then, yes, city employees will have to be furloughed. City employees will have to have their wages cut. So is it really worth it to make this a mandate? and cause more division within people within this city? Or can you just say, we highly suggest that people wear a mask to try to alleviate some of the germs, but don't make it a mandate. I would hate to see this city go down the tubes, but that's where we're going if we keep it up because we're not gonna have the tax, the tax revenue coming in and people will pull their businesses they have already said so. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kramer. Next, we have Jordan Block. Uh, Mr. Block, can you please unmute yourself and uh, say your first name, spell your last name, and give your address for the council? All right. My name is Jordan Block. Last name spelled B as in Bravo, L O C H like hotel. And I live at 216 South Jackson Street, apartment 8 here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Thank you. Go ahead. All right. Well, first and foremost, to the mayor and the city council, thank you for allowing us the public to voice our concerns over this mask mandate. Now, I am someone who has tested negative multiple times from COVID-19, and I am against the mask mandate, even though I usually, I do carry one with me just in case. I do go into places where, where the social distancing is not um, applicable. Um, I strongly would like to urge the city council to not pass this mask mandate because we are all adults. We all have our choices. We are free people. We um, so just just 
please do not do not allow this mandate to happen. I'm hoping I didn't take up too much time because I did I did have a uh, low battery power. So again, thank you for letting our voices be heard. Have a good night. Thank you, Mr. Block. You're welcome. Uh, next, we have Jay Gig. Jay Gig, please unmute yourself. Uh, say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the yeah. council. Uh, first name Joe, last name Giganti, 1420 Bellevue Street, Green Bay, 54311. May I start? Yes, please. First, I want to thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's a pleasure to finally be in a forum with you. I hope you'll be able to join me on my radio show at some point. I do want to point out some striking, glaring inaccuracies. Uh, Mama Barris said there's 85 babies in ICU. That is factually incorrect. 85 babies tested positive. They only know this through checking data. I have several news sources I can gladly send you. This shows a great example of emotionalism driving decision-making versus reason and logic, which is how we're supposed to make decisions. Those babies were asymptomatic. As far as we can tell from all the actual information being reported, they didn't even know that they had COVID. This was discovered in a data dump. As for the effectiveness of masking, there are several studies that actually show masking is ineffective, particularly wrapping a t-shirt around your face. I'm shocked that the CEO of Bellin suggested that. In the press conference yesterday, she said, and I quote, and as studies have been done and the science has sort of caught up with itself, we now know that cloth masks, face coverings when worn widely in public does slow significantly the spread of COVID-19. I asked uh, Ms. Woleski to send me her sources. She sent me a Vox.com article, hardly a reliable source, that cited several others and all were anecdotal, using qualifying terms like it appears, most likely, and so forth. She sent a link to the CDC, which talked about a case that I was already familiar with, and the direct quote said that the masking policy, quote, likely mitigated the spread, meaning there is no definitive proof in fact, there is no study, as one, I believe, doctor said earlier, but yet the statement that was made with the mayor standing there was that, in fact, studies have been done, the science is caught up, and we know this for a fact. Lying to people in public doesn't give people a sense of security. It makes them feel less secure. And as for the question of going, there's a lot of false dichotomies that you have to have a mask to open up schools, to open up businesses, something else that we heard absolutely false. It's a logical fallacy. And I'll just say to the teacher Patsky and the other person that mentioned wearing symbols, hopefully that teacher is not a history teacher. The last time we made people wear symbols, millions of them were murdered. And it was done in the name of that which was righteous and good. No history. Understand something. People that say we have proven we can't do it, the death rate post opening up the state on a da daily average is 33% less than it was during the actual safer at home order. The average during safer at home was nine deaths per day in Wisconsin. It is six deaths per day right now. Yes, every life matters, but stop giving false information. We have been responsible. We have done our job. Giganti, your time is expired. Thank you very much. Um, next, we have Leah Merriman, uh, and I also want to say we have Leah Merriman and Julie's iPhone. These are the people who have used the feature on Zoom to raise their blue hand. Um, and so after I hear from Julie's iPhone, I will scroll down the list and find people who've unmuted themselves, but I'll remind you when we get there. Thank you so much. Ms. Merriman, can you please unmute yourself and uh, say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. My name is Leah Merriman. I work, my husband works in Green Bay and I live up in Sabisky. Can you spell your last name, please? Oh, M-E-R-R-I-M-A-N. Awesome, thank you, go ahead. Okay, thanks for letting me talk. Um, I, I'm gonna be kind of all over the place because I've been listening to everybody and I've been watching some body language of certain people. And um, uh, one of the things that I remember hearing was that uh, virus, can only spread. I don't know whether you'll hear with my ear. Can you hear what I'm saying? Because somebody's talking over me right now. Yes, I'm sorry. Hold on one second. Okay, no problem. 
Okay, so. All right, just give me one second, Ms. Merriman. No problem. Okay, you can go ahead and continue. Okay, uh, I heard someone talk about the droplet um, that what I've read is that viruses only spread droplet if the person is actually symptomatic and it does not spread with asymptomatic droplets. If people are scared, then they should stay home. The evidence shows absolutely that pregnant women should not ever be wearing a mask. It's an issue of uh, uh, gas exchange and they're not getting a gas exchange that's pure and good for them if they wear a mask. I've had nine babies, I know. You cover my face up, I'm not going to be able to breathe, especially in this heat. Uh, the mayor closed all the polling places uh, except two. It frees the National Guard to come in and assist with elections, and we're supposed to be trusting him with this issue and, like, uh, bringing it up now. It, the, it disenfranchised both my daughters, which work in, and live in Green Bay, from uh, voting because they wouldn't, they couldn't stand out there till one o'clock in the morning, and they had to go to work. Lady uh, that brought up babies in Texas, it was 52, and they had no symptoms. Even Snopes said that was false. The Wisconsin Grocers Association does not want this because they're not cops. Dollar Tree already reversed their mandate because somebody got shot. What about people's religion? What if it's against their religion to wear the mask? Have you even provided for that? Uh, I watched. Uh, people rolling their eyes, especially doctors, uh, when people were saying something they didn't agree with. This is a really divisive issue. What about the people that can't pay their bills because they, they won't wear a mask when they go to work? What about the suicide rate for the people that are forced to stay home because they're terrified to go out because they think they're going to get accosted wearing a mask for not wearing one? Um, you look at the numbers. This can't be even qualified as a pandemic anymore, according to the formerly respected health manuals out there. What about the nursing home people? I can't even hug my dad right now and he can't even talk to me because he has a trach and he's had a ventilator for six years. I mean, there's a lot of research about sensory deprivation out there, but there's not a lot of research about this virus and, and the, you know, uh, asymptomatic people transmitting it. There was one case that I saw from a Chinese person from Germany or going to Germany and it ended up that he did have symptoms. So uh, we need to be around people so that our immune systems are exposed to bacteria and viruses so that our immune system functions right. What if you deprive someone of that, you're depriving them of their immunity? Where's this normalcy we're talking about? We're not going to get back to normal. This thank, virus is here to stay. Martin. Thank you so much. Your time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good job. Okay, next we have Julie's iPhone. Julie's iPhone, please unmute yourself, say your first name, spell your last name, provide your address for the council. Julie Wergen, W E R G I N. I live on Tyrolean Drive in Green Bay. Okay, go ahead. Um, thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. Go ahead. Oh, I think we lost you. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Okay. So. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. oh okay. You're Sorry. I mark. thought yeah. I think I lost you for a second. Yes, I think so. Okay. Hold on. All right. Go right ahead. Okay. Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Hello? Hi. Oh, yes. Hi. Okay. 
I just wanted to speak real briefly to comment that I've been listening to everyone else talk since the meeting started. And I appreciate everyone's opinions. And we all have an opinion, whether it's for masks or without masks. I just want to point out several of the comments about people are all adults. However, we're not all adults, and the ordinance does affect children as well. And in the case of my children, they're not old enough to understand the information, the data, and to make that decision for themselves if they need to wear a mask. Masks aren't the most convenient. My children aren't always thrilled to have to wear them if they go to the store with me, but they need to wear them to be safe. I know the school board is working very hard to make decisions regarding how to keep the children safe. Masks are going to be a part of that. Hopefully, masks are going to continue to be required in more and more stores, whether this ordinance passes or not. Are there people in the stores who don't wear the masks appropriately? Absolutely. Dep if it's a person in a checkout that's required to wear them at a store, I do usually, if I have to use that checkout, I'll just say, did you know that that really does need to cover your nose to be effective or something like that? I certainly don't attack people as far as people feeling attacked when they don't wear masks, you get the same thing when you do wear a mask. You have people stare at you, or I've had people comment on the type of mask I'm wearing. I realize we don't have all the answers. Things do change. Doctors are sometimes wrong. However, this has been going on in the world since the end of last year when it started. Doctors are still learning things and new information is provided as they learn it. Masks have been shown in other countries to be effective in helping reduce this. No matter what type of mask, it's better than nothing in most situations. As far as we're all adults, I think everyone, if you watch the news, has heard the stories about the adults having parties over summer and taking bets as to who can get infected with coronavirus. Those are adults. It's a little scary to think about that's our future because they certainly need better education than trying to catch it. And there was one dire situation where the man looked at the doctor and said, I think I made a mistake here. And he died shortly after that. So again, I thank everyone for their comments. I respect everyone's opinion, and I thank you for considering this matter. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, next we have Crystal Matthew. Ms. Matthew, please unmute yourself. Say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. You bet. My name is Crystal Mathy. It's M-A-T-H-E-Y. And I'm at 4256 Hillcrest Drive. Go ahead. Thank you. So I just had a couple of comments. I too appreciate the time and um, that you're seeking out opinions with everyone here. My thoughts on this are that it boils down to um, our freedoms and our freedoms of being able to make the choice and and choose what works best for some doesn't necessarily work best for others so i appreciate having the choice in the matter of yeah but i'm gonna do that while i'm here or no i'm not gonna do that while i'm here um also when it comes to the mass i know i i'm a teacher and um the conversations we've been having for our school and whatnot all boils down to as well as proper care of the mass um, vast majority of people aren't necessarily taking care of their masks in the way that it needs to be taken care of. So in a sense, it does just give the false security as well for the people around them just because it's on. I can say personally too, I have a mask in my vehicle. Um, I've had it in my vehicle for several months. And if I'm being honest, I, I haven't washed it. So really for me to be wearing that isn't doing a lot of good to have it and I know that I'm not in the only I'm not the only one that's in that boat so we don't have a way to even be able 
to monitor if they are being used correctly. Um, I really think that people just have to choose what's best for them and what's best for their family. Um, seek out times as well, you know, when you're out and about to, if you're gonna go at maybe a more high risk time, if you're feeling more comfortable around that time or maybe, as an alternative, if you're a person that wants to wear a mask and be surrounded um, by people wearing a mask, you know, having the option to go when others are wearing masks as well. But really, I think that it's important that we do have the choice to be able to wear it and that the proper care of them is also being looked at for um, if it is going to be worn or not. That's all for me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Matthew. Next, we have Michael Teske. Michael Teske, please unmute yourself, say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Hi, my name is Michael Teske, capital T is in Tom, E-S-K-E. My address is 2654 Foxwood Court, De Pere, Wisconsin. <clears throat> I want to thank you for allowing us this forum to express our opinions, and I appreciate everyone else's opinions that have uh, gone before me. My biggest issue with this, and I'll keep this short, is that um, I know we have access to the internet and all the information. And as much as I respect the doctors and what they have to say, they're not the medical virologists or um, <clears throat> the infectious disease experts that I've been reading papers on. The New England Journal of Medicine cites explicitly for COVID-19, how masks are ineffective. Now, again, I totally do not judge people who are wearing masks. I wear a mask. And I think as we've heard throughout these calls, the people that are against the mask mandate are responsible. They're wearing masks where they go. So I just wanted to echo that and just make sure that um, our freedoms are there. I've had several people in my immediate family with high risks get the COVID and they have come out of it. They've actually very quickly. Uh, even a you know, per, person affected with cancer. And to me, the, the fear factor, the fear porn that is going on with this. And again, I respect everyone. If you're, if you're fearful, I get it. You know, and I, I feel bad for you. I'm not gonna live in fear. And I certainly don't, um, I, I don't think these masks serve anything other than promoting or projecting fear on the public. And it is a very divisive thing. And as this goes forward, it's gonna to continue to get worse as far as a division in this country, which I, I never thought in my life it could get this bad. But again, uh, I'm against this mask mandate. Um, I hope that the adults in the room here can trust us as adults, as you know, the, the previous speaker said, well, there's adults that are gonna do dumb things. Well, that's in any aspect of life. So again, thank you very much and God bless America. Thank you, Mr. Teske. Next we have Dan Terrio. Dan Terrio, please unmute yourself, say your first name, spell your last name and provide your address for the council. Sure, thank you, Dan Terrio, 1170 Minahan Street, Green Bay. So I wasn't going to say anything tonight, um, but I've been listening to a lot of the commentary and um, a lot of the thoughts, which I think is fantastic that people are engaged in the process. But the thing that came to mind throughout this whole thing was uh, several years ago, there was a proposal within the state legislature to ban smoking in restaurants and bars. And the same reaction happened. They thought that it was an infringement on their liberty. Um, they, if they don't want to be into in an environment where they're smoking, they won't go. You actually saw a polar change when it was passed and health was being promoted. And now you don't think about it even when you go into a restaurant or bar. This is temporary. Just keep that in mind that there are people in our hospitals, there are people that are getting sick because for the past two months, there hasn't been any type of um, guidance from the state on how to control this other than socially distancing where mask is possible but people you have your liberty at this point to still wear masks and it's not happening we're still seeing rates going up we need to rely on science on this and if science within our and specifically within our community is saying wear masks and that something needs to be done we need to follow that the american healthcare system is not equipped for a pandemic 
That's why there was an important piece in there with the safer at home. Those were lifted in a lot of communities. You saw rates go up. Masks are the next piece in here. And remember, this is temporary. You're not losing anything. But, you know, it's a temporary sacrifice that we all have to take in order to keep our community and the people here safe. What's really disheartened me during this is a lot of people kept thinking about me, 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 me. It's about others. And we have to keep that as a, at the centerpiece to keep every person safe. The last thing I want to say is, you know, we, we hear this a lot, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I can't have liberty or happiness without life. So we need to keep that as a centerpiece and do what the right thing is to keep every person safe. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Terrio. Okay, we do have one other person whose hand is raised. Then, as I said, I will scroll down the list and make sure um, I'm going to find people who would like to speak. So next we'll hear from uh, William Melinda Eck. Uh, Ms. Eck, please unmute yourself, say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Okay, um, Melinda Eck. 1634 Birchwood Drive, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of people have said a lot of the things that, you know, that I would share. So um, I'm just going to share a couple of personal stories. Um, one of them is um, I personally have a hard time wearing the mask. I have a hard time breathing without the mask, and the mask makes me feel like I'm suffocating. I have a niece that has asthma she's required to wear a mask at work she fainted at work um, so it does affect people in a negative way um, i was actually at an event last night where someone um, at a funeral she was wearing a mask and actually when i went in she had the mask on her um, chin and uh, so i asked her about it and then she put it up and I mean, within the next few minutes, I, she adjusted so many times. And um, the reason I point that out is because it, it shows you that people are uncomfortable wearing masks. They touch it. They touch other things. They've now spread those germs that are from that disposable mask everywhere. Are they changing it every half hour, like what's recommended um, in cases? It does say on the box it doesn't even work for um, preventing the coronavirus um, and then those that are wearing the uh, piece of fabric or bandana, um, are they washing it in between? Uh, a lot of people keep it in their car um, in between where they're wearing it um, and maybe going from place to place, they might put it in their car because they don't need it for one place. Um, and now we're talking, there's a lot of um, heat going on in the car so that increases the bacteria on the mask um, so and really if you go to the CDC website it says this is no longer a pandemic um, they've said that I am not understanding why this late in the game we're gonna say everybody has to wear a mask it doesn't make sense to me it seems an overreach and I'm extremely opposed to the wearing of mask being forced. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Eck. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I do see some other people have raised their hands. I'm going to scroll down just in case uh, there have been people who are waiting. Actually, if there are people who are on camera who'd like to speak. I'm looking to see if there are people. Okay, and I'm going to scroll down. If you'd like to speak, unmute yourself. 
and I can actually see that your icon is unmuted. Put your camera on so they see that you're there. I do see that there is um, 676-8483. Hi, my name is Melissa Allen. My last name is A-L-L. Oh, hold on one second, one second. So 676-8483 is Melissa Allen? Yes. Okay, hold on one second, Ms. Allen. Okay, go ahead. Say your first name, spell your last name, provide your address. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, my name is Melissa Allen. Last name, A-L-L-E-N. Address is Creepy Road, De Pere, Wisconsin. I work in Green Bay at one of our larger healthcare facilities, and I'm going to try to keep it together uh, for this, but um, also nine months pregnant and uh Honestly, it's been a rough year. Um, I cannot wear the masks um, for a healthcare provider to act like a pregnant woman can wear a mask is absolutely ridiculous. Um, so that's just a, a personal thing I had to get off my chest. I have to wear one at work, obviously, but you will see it on my chin, over my nose. We have to reuse them for a week. So acting like you can don and don it, take it on and off without touching it is absolutely ridiculous. Um, and from a statistics standpoint, um, I'm also, um, I've been a hospice nurse. Um, that's not what I do right now. I actually have an emergency COVID staffing leadership position, but um, in my history as a hospice nurse, I've been bedside with a lot of patients. And um, one of my memorable patients shared with me that she wasted her life worrying. And if we look at um, the COVID death rate in Brown County as a percentage to the population, 0.017%. Point, I'm sorry, 0.017% of the Brown County population have died from COVID. I am not insensitive to death. I have seen death, but we cannot have death without life. And there are much more painful ways to die. I'm not saying that COVID is not a painful way to die. There are other pain, more cancer is more painful. Um, there are many more ways to die that we are not restricting. And for somebody to try to impose such a restriction of freedom on our community is so scary to me. We are seeing riots. We are seeing our, our nation fall apart. And for our local community to discuss imposing, taking such freedom of choice away from individuals is so devastating that I cannot handle it and many people feel the same and the discrimination is real because I've seen it in the stores. I think that's pretty much all I'm going to say. I just pray that I can trust our local government to discern that our freedom is more important than this restriction because in the big picture we have a higher chance of dying from other things. And I get it, we can get sick, but that should be my choice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, next we have Hannah Momberg. Uh, Ms. Momberg, please unmute yourself. Say your first name, spell your last name for and give your address for the council. Hi, my name is Hannah Malmberg, M-A-L-M-B-E-R-G, and I live at 1251 Raleigh Street in District 8. Um, I actually want to express my support for a masking mandate. Uh, I am an immunocompromised individual, and quite frankly, this virus can kill me. And 
I hate to get emotional, I'm sorry, but to see people in our community disregard that. I don't care what the rate of death is when people are dying and globally 600,000 lives have been lost. And I think that if we can do anything to prevent any loss of life, we should take that step. And I, we, the scary thing is, is we also don't know the long-term health effects of this. And I'm in my young, tw I'm right early 20, 20s, and I know you might think, oh, I'll be fine. But I do have this health issue, and I have to see people my age take very risky steps right now because they have disregard for their community. And I think a, ma a mandate would push people in the right direction to consider their neighbor. And I think when we look at other countries where there's a better handle on this virus, masking is one of the steps that they've taken. Of course, it's not the only step, but I think it's an important one. And I would also like to say that I think people are acting like this is imposing on their freedom. It's oppression. And quite frankly, I think if you think that, you've never experienced real oppression or real restrictions on your freedom. Because this is not oppression. It's caring for your community and it's a public health, um, public health step that I believe we should take. And so I want to express my support for this. I know I previously emailed uh, some of the council members Members. And again, I apologize for getting emotional, um, but it's very alarming to me when I see in our community that it's getting worse and it's not getting better. And I know we question why now and why not earlier. I think better late than never. And yes, it should have happened earlier, quite frankly. And I am alarmed that our city is not taking more measures to protect people in my situation. Um, so sorry for getting emotional, but I just wanted to express my support for this. Thank you. I yield my time. Thank you, Hannah. Next, we have uh, Andrea Johnson. Andrea Johnson, please unmute yourself and say your first name and spell your last name for the council and provide your address. My name is Andrea Johnson and my address is 387 Windward Road and uh, in, here in Green Bay. Um, I just um, want to ask the city council if they believe that it is their job as elected officials to mandate something over the people that isn't 100% um, uh, reliable not um not uh we we can't trust any of the information we've been given as far as the latest numbers we have healthcare officials that are not actually healthcare mds or rns telling the people that we need to mask up when there's proof scientific proof that the masks are not effective now if everybody who believes we should mask wants to wear a mask because they believe they are protected, then why, if you're protected, should I have to wear a mask if I don't want to? So what that tells me is, is that people don't really believe the masks are effective. What they want is for everybody to be the same. And everybody does not need to behave the same nor be the same um, in order for us to be protected. We need to protect ourselves if we have vulnerable situations and healthcare concerns. Um, and whatever measures we need to do to do that. Um, um, but we should not enforce that on anyone and for our elected officials to make a decision to force people with their um, to, to wear masks or, or anything else, to wear anything on their person. Um, is against constitutional rights. Um, what I wanna ask the city council is, when you um, consider this, to consider what the repercussions are down the road. Because this mask ordinance isn't the end then. What you're doing is you're opening a door for a can of worms down the road for a power hungry mayor or governor or president that gets to do what they want without the council's check. So um, the council is at the behest of the people. 
and the people are trying to ask you to consider and be considerate of our constitutional rights, whether or not um, the masking thing is uh, approved. I think that the council and the mayor need to look down the road. Your grandchildren and grandchildren's children are going to see what happens as a result of this decision. It's pivotal. And I just want you to know that you will be held accountable for the decisions you make as elected officials. And thank you so much for having this opportunity for everyone. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. Thank you. Vivian Lawyer, good job, Andrea. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Next, we have iPhone iPhone, please unmute yourself, uh, give your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Jessica Smith, S-M-I-T-H, Cardinal Lane. I want to start by saying thank you for taking the time. Oh, I'm sorry, start a little early. I want to start by saying <laughs> thank you for taking the time tonight to listen to um, all of our concerns. Um, I went in, I, I'm actually a nurse myself. I went into the medical profession to care for others and to be a servant to them. With that being said, I care for people in all different walks of life. I love what I do. I love helping others to live a healthier life. In medical history, we have never mandated masks for the flu, tuberculosis, SARS, or pneumonia. We don't quarantine healthy people, we quarantine sick people. We can control sickness in the hospital, but it needs to stay there. Where there is risk, there must be choice. Freedom of choice matters. This is what our constitution in this great country is founded on. The hospital staff in the area have been furloughed. Where working in the medical field used to be that we all had work continuously. This is hurting our economy more than anything. Our mental health is what is really suffering. Suicide, depression, isolation, the rates for suicide are, are huge. People need interaction with others. It's a necessity. I choose to wear a mask around the elderly, immunocompromised, etc., and wear it while at work. But I highly disagree that there should be a mandate to force it. It is overstepping our basic constitutional rights. We, the people, never forget that. Based on the numbers in this call, 32 people have been against the masks. Nine people are for it. We, the people, have spoken. Thank you so much. Next, we have uh, Dr. Becky Krull Unleashed. Um, please unmute yourself and uh, give your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Becky Krull, K R U L L, Royal Crown Court. So no, I'm not. And okay. Yes, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. I'm a veterinarian as well as a business owner in this community. And my concern comes on many levels. Uh, one, I'm a doctor and I may not be taking care of people, but I am taking care of animals. Coronavirus is a virus that has been in our environment for centuries. Um, and it is something that I'm faced with on a daily basis. Um, the way we handle it is certainly not the way it's being handled in the human world. I could, I could present many things on epidemiology, virology, how to analyze data, which by the way is pre being presented to you in the wrong fashion. And so I'm not gonna waste your time with that because as you can see, again, the majority of people have come to you this evening giving you that data. I wanna come to you as a business owner today. I would like you to explain to me how I'm supposed to mandate this in my place of business. I'm already suffering the consequences from this disease with lower care for my pets, trying to deal with clients who are scared, being attacked daily in my clinic on how we decide to wear or not wear a mask. We're already facing a problem that's very difficult as a business owner. If you are now gonna ask me to be the mask police, I'm not really sure how I'm to continue. I have business in Green Bay and in Alloway, and so I know the mayor's hope is that we set the precedence on this. I would certainly hope that we don't set the precedence on a mandate so that Alloway follows because then two of my business businesses will be attacked on a daily basis. I'd also like to point out that there is a council here that sat and voted twice to not bring this to a vote. 
They voted twice to not bring this up, but the mayor still has decided to overreach in his power to vote on this. I'd ask the council tonight to not give that power to him anymore. Take away the state of emergency. We are not in a state of emergency anymore. As you have seen, the CDC has reported that we are out of the pandemic. Someone has already pointed out that we're close to maybe an endemic. So take that power away from him this evening so that we don't have this discussion anymore and the vote doesn't have to be had. I ask this as a taxpayer and a business owner, as well as a medical profession. I'd like to point out tonight the nurses that have come here to speak. I applaud them. They are the ones willing to speak out. You wanna know why the other physicians in this town aren't speaking out besides the CEO of a large hospital who does not hold MD behind her name? Because they're scared because they're scared of their jobs, because that CEO holds their livelihood in her hands. I have many physician friends who are against this mandate and don't believe that masks work, but there is no way they're gonna put their name on the line in public to say that in fear of the CEO like her. Council, I plead you tonight, listen to the majority. The, the silent majority has now spoken. You know what is right and, and stand up for what we have said this evening. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. Kroll. Next, we have Laura. Laura, please unmute yourself, uh, state your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. My name is Laura Kraut, and I live on Indian Hill Drive in Green Bay. Can you spell your last name too, please? A-R-A-U-S-E. Thank you, go ahead. I echo everything that has been said tonight, so I'll respond. I will not repeat statistics and studies for the sake of the time tonight. But in respect to those few that say that I need to do this, that it is my responsibility to protect you and your safety, I say to you, I, it is not my responsibility to protect you. And I do not need to do this. I have an immune compromised disease. My husband has moderate to severe COPD. We are both high risk people, but we both accept personal responsibility for our own safety. It is not up to my elected officials or any other resident of this city, state or county to determine or protect for my safety. It is my and my alone responsibility. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, we, Justin Steiner's already spoken. Um, Brad Burmeister, uh, Mr. Burmeister, please unmute yourself and say your first name, spell your last name and provide your address for the council. Brad Burmeister, B-U-R-M-E-I-S-T-E-R. -E and I live on Whispering Creek Court in the village of Howard. Go right ahead. So uh, I'm an emergency physician here in Green Bay. I grew up locally in Seymour, and I actually work at the hospital which I was born. I don't want to go into any details and refute any statistics that were cited so far, but I just want to say that in my medical opinion as a physician, someone who has raised in this community, I think that a masking ordinance is the right thing to do at this time. We see very concerning trends in our numbers in our population. Our trajectory is very unfavorable right now. This is a terrible virus, and we need to do what we can to help protect our community, protect our entire population, protect our economy and get our children back to school. I think this really should be required so that we can keep moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Burmeister. Okay, so I'm going to, Mayor, I'm just going to go down the list here again to see if there's anyone who'd like to speak. Um, if there's anyone who would like to speak who has not already spoken, Please unmute yourself. I'm scrolling down and I can see that your icon is unmuted. Or you can start speaking, unmute yourself and start speaking and we can get you up. I would like to make a few comments. Okay, hold on one second. And is this 676-8483? No, this is K Jig. Oh, oh yes, oh yes. 
I think your icon kind of got pushed down. Okay, yes, indeed. Hold on one second. Thank you so much. All right, go ahead. First name, last name, address. My name is Kristen Giganti. My name is Kristen Giganti, G-I-G-A-N-T-I, 1420 Bellevue Street in Green Bay. Um, I just want to thank all the people that so eloquently and reasonably um, spoke out about this mandate, which I am also against. Um, I think it's important to note that we need to make this decision logically and not emotionally. Um, we've seen what all the emotionalism can do right here on this call. The, the poor girl who spoke a few minutes ago who was falling apart at the seams, who seems to think that the sky is falling and she's going to die. That is not a good place to make a decision from, from a place of fear and emotionalism. Um, I think that we need to look at all of the facts and be reasonable. Um, and one question I want to reiterate, I think we really need to have a better idea of when this mandate would end if it were put in place. Is it when there's no percentage of COVID positive people in Brown County? There's really not a good explanation of when there's an end cap on this. And I think we deserve to know um, what that looks like. Um, I also just wanna make the comment that by doing this, you're really creating a snitch culture here in Green Bay by asking citizens to be you know, watching each other very suspiciously. We already see so much animosity going on. Um, there's a couple people on this call that have mentioned that they've been accosted and harassed in public for not wearing a mask. I think that for the good of our community, we need to, to stop and, and take a hard look at what this is doing to us. And by asking people to snitch on their neighbor, that's only gonna make it worse. And I think that we in Green Bay are better than that. Um, and I think also it, it creates animosity towards those who are asked to enforce this, be it business owners or our hardworking police department. Um, you know, I don't think creating more animosity against those people is a good thing either. Um, the one last thing I'd like to bring up is um, to ask the council if they've considered the fact that this has the potential to open the city up to enormous potential legal litigation. Um, frankly, this is a civil rights lawyer's dream and for good reason, because this is not constitutional. And I think they really need to take that into consideration. Do they want to risk opening themselves up to lawsuits? Because I'm quite sure there are people out there that are willing, rightly so, to take that step. Um, I think it's obvious that the voice of the people has spoken here, that the city of Green Bay does not want this. And as a city council, it's your responsibility to listen to the voice of your constituents and do what is right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Giganti. Okay, uh, I will have one final call for people who'd like to speak to this issue. I think there's a 430-1300. I'm not sure if they can unmute. Can you? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Oh, oh, yes, I see. 430-1300. Uh, can you unmute yourself, please? I will unmute you. Can you hear us and speak? I can hear you. Okay, awesome. Um, just give me one second. Sure. Lots of clicking. Okay, say your first name, um, spell your last name, provide your address for the council. Bronson Smith, S-M-I-T-H. I live on Smith Street in Green Bay, 54302. Okay. It's clear from the overwhelming majority of people speaking, oppose this, oppose this mandate tonight. The people that want this mandate to go forward are in the minority. And last time I checked, in a democracy, majority rules. The, the mayor and his COVID brigade, who would who who would pass this mandate tonight, regardless of the majority of Green Bay residents that oppose it, are not serving the citizens faithfully. I oppose this mandate wholeheartedly. I believe any mandate is totalitarian in in nature. Alderman Scannell calling people who oppose this mandate. Uh, 
what did he call them? I believe it was immoral, is very unbecoming of a pu- public servant being paid $10,000 a year by the taxpayers of Green Bay. This mandate was defeated last week at the committee, at, at, at the committee, yet the mayor decided to sidestep the committee and go for four, forward. What a slap in the face to not only the committee, but all those residents that took the time to speak out against it. And those that spoke out were overwhelmingly against it then. This issue is too big to be decided by a dozen elected officials. This should be a referendum vote on the November ballot. And by the way, the mayor should resign. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Smith. Okay. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Can I be up? Okay. Unmute yourself. Say your first name, spell your last name, and provide your address for the council. Uh, Elliot Christensen, C H R I S T E N S O N, 1988 Mulberry Lane, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with my giant list of why this is a terrible idea like I did last week at the committee. Uh, I just want to make sure that. Uh, I don't get misrepresented as being one of the 10 to one that are supposedly in favor of this. It's very clear that that's not the case. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Christensen. Anyone else who would like to speak, please unmute yourself. I, I would like to speak. Oh, yes, Katie Hyde. Okay, just give me one second, Ms. Hyde. Okay, go ahead. Say your first name, spell your last name, provide your address. Katie, last name Hyde, H-Y-D-E, address 671 Sunnycrest Street, Green Bay, 54302. Go ahead. Um, I would just like to, I'm not going to, you know, go over everything everybody else has, um, but I, I too am a nurse. Um, I too have seen many people's lives lost to various illnesses. Um, I've been at the bedside of people losing their lives and seen what families that are directly impacted by COVID have gone through, not being able to be in contact with their family, whether their um, loved ones are in nursing facilities or hospitals, um, regardless of the reason why they're there, if it's COVID or not. So I think that just this really, I don't know why this is such a complex issue and a big decision. I think it really comes down to let's just help each other. And by doing that, we can all wear masks for a set amount of time. And I don't know, love your neighbor, do what you would want to be done to you. And it's that simple. And that is all. Thank you so much. Oh, wait, one more thing. Oh, absolutely. I would like to... Um, specifically call out, I don't remember the person's name, but the individual that was extremely brave, that was in their 20s and is immunocompromised, I applaud you for speaking up and I um, I wish you the best and hopefully we can all come together to help people that can't help themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to speak? Please unmute yourself. Anyone else? Hello, this is Teresa Iverson, I-V-E-R-S-O-N. I oh. live at Redstone Court in Omega. All right. Go right ahead, Ms. Iverson. I think that there is a lot of great points that have been brought up. I feel like the medical community has been extremely intellectually inconsistent here. And so I'm not even gonna get into that point, but if we do decide to mandate masks, which I'm obviously completely against, then do we end up doing that to every child who gets their childhood vaccinations? Because there are live attenuated viruses that shed <laughs> and then those children are asymptomatic or symptomatic shedders after they get their childhood vaccinations. I, I think it would be completely ridiculous to ask families who have to work to quarantine themselves after their childhood vaccinations for their children. 
or for themselves as adults and anyone that is in their home and anyone they come in contact with. That's something that nobody is talking about when they say you're putting other people at risk if you don't wear a mask. This should be mandated. It's about other people. Consider your neighbor. Be loving. I completely agree with that. We should consider other people and be loving. But you're opening this up to if you are going to be intellectually consistent here and medically consistent, then you would have to also say if we're going to be afraid of these viruses out there that are being shed by people that we can't see that maybe they are sick, uh, you have to be consistent across the board. And I would never say that you should have to wear a mask if, for, if you're going to give your kid vaccinations. That's just ridiculous. Um, also, like they have said, there's no mandates to be a healthier person, to eat healthy. In our family, we have immunocompromised people here, and we are not asking anyone to wear a mask for us. We have the responsibility to quarantine ourselves if we feel like we're going to get sick. It's no one else's responsibility to take care of me. We have personal responsibility and we need to take that seriously. Um, I, I have a lot of friends who are physicians and I remember talking to one of them and saying, aren't you worried when there's somebody who comes in with, you know, the flu and they are sneezing all over the place. And she's like, no, because I face the other direction. They don't cough right into my mouth. One time that happened and I was like, well, gonna get sick now. Like we, we can be responsible people without requiring all other human beings to do exactly what we ask them to do. And uh, Dr. Fauci said that um, he wouldn't um, tell people that we should not wear masks right now when before he said that it was completely ridiculous to wear masks for the regular population. Um, I, like, how are we supposed to trust this when people go back and forth and back and forth? Thank you very much, Ms. Iverson. Anyone else to speak? If there aren't any additional speakers, I will entertain a motion to close the floor. Motion to, to close, close the floor. floor. Motion 